Right, we should be going live. Okay, okay. Mic off. Tell me when. Mic Hello, on. Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome Mic to off. the Beetle and Grins Twitch channel or a number of other Twitch channels which may be hosting this Twitch channel. Uh, my name is Justice. I am a producer goblin over here at uh, Beetle and Grims, and you are joining us for a uh, one shot uh, that is for our Fizz Bands February. Um, this is an adventure which may or may not be included in our upcoming uh, silver edition of Fizz Bands Treasury of Dragons. So there's sure to be some draconic mischief uh, in this session tonight. Uh, so that's that's us. That's what we do. We make uh, box sets and cool things. Uh, but you're here to see us play and to have some fun with us. Uh, and uh, you wanna you wanna hear about who else we got here? So I'm I'm gonna go around this digital table uh, where we've become accustomed to some fun digital tables over the past few years now. Uh, and uh, I will introduce some of our players. Well, I will let our players introduce themselves. <laughs> Uh, so they're going to tell us uh, who they are, uh, who they're playing, and maybe plug a cool thing that they're doing or what they like to do, or, or honestly, whatever they want to say whenever it comes to them. Uh, so I'm going to start off with um, Thomas. Hi, I'm Thomas from Six Sides of Gaming. Uh, I'm excited to play with everyone tonight. Uh, I'm the only one here who's playing a non-canon character, and i uh, uh, we'll see what happens as he plays. That's a version of a fox chronomancer. And uh, we've got this book coming out called Legacy of Mana. There's my plug. And I'm going to wrap it up there. There's so much more I could say, but we're going to pass it on to the other lovely and talented folks I get to play with tonight. Nice. Uh, looking forward to it. Canadian, that. too, but don't hold it against me. Hey, <laughs> uh, Matthew? Hi, I'm Matthew Palmer. Some of you might know me as the Pro Wrestling Monster Hunter. You can catch me on Twitter at PW Monster Hunter and follow my pro wrestling ways. I'll be playing the Goblin Ranger by the name of Loser. Athena? Okay. Hi, I'm Athena. You know me. I wrestle play fight on TV a lot sometimes. Used to work for WWE. Now I work for myself. Ha. But I'm here and I'm playing Fix It Felicia, baby. Everyone's favorite artificer. Ah. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Kat. Hi, I'm Kat Kruger. I'm the uh, dungeon master at D20 Dames, usually. Um, I'm a freelance game designer um, and I am playing Moonstone, a Herringon. Um, I just completely blanked. Uh, Herringon slash slash buckler. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, cool. Uh, and, and I'm Justice. I'll be y'all's dungeon master today. We also have one other person here on our Zoom call that I'm not sure if you can see. I'm guessing maybe not, uh, but that is Jason. Uh, so shout out to Jason My in the chat. Jason, can we hear your beautiful voice? No. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jason is producing your game, so thank you to Jason, uh, responsible for this wonderful Twitch uh, overlay, which is probably around us here, uh, and all of the, the coordinations within. So any digital uh, mess ups are my fault. So heads up. Any digital mess ups are your fault. Um, oh my God. So yeah. So welcome to our game. Uh, and we, I mean, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, if y'all are ready, ready to roll some dice. Yep. <clears throat> awesome. Um, so uh, you all are going to begin this adventure in a town called Daggerford. I don't know if you're familiar with the town of Daggerford. It is along the Sword Coast in the Forgotten Realms. It won't be super important to know this town of Daggerford. You don't need to take notes on it. Um, but it is uh, built on the side of a low hill uh, on the floodplains of uh, a town which I'm not going to pronounce uh, uh, correctly. Um, there's a keep, a local duchess, uh, and a number of hamlets, uh, and uh, in ours as well, uh, there is a theater. Um, so your adventure uh, kicks off when you all, uh, a band of adventurers traveling together for one reason or another, uh, you receive a letter. Uh, so I believe that our wonderful producer uh, can stick this letter up for our fans to see. And if you're in the Twitch as well, uh, you will be able to uh, see that that letter pop up. But I'm going to read it for you anyway, because it has uh, some text in it that's possibly uh, handwritten. So it's 
says, welcome, traveler. I can tell your adventure uh, and appreciate the finer things in life. And my latest play is one of the finest you'll ever see. Please accept these tickets with my compliments. All I ask is that you meet me after the performance by the stage door. I need your help and we'll make it worth your while. Enjoy the show. Sincerely, Reginald Wells. Um, and in this uh, little letter, uh, you also find a small ticket uh, to a play uh, that is called I Left My Heart at Moon Glimmer Lake, a love story fantastic. Uh, it is a local show happening at the play here in town. Um, so you all have received this letter. You are in the town of Daggerford and you're traveling together. Uh, what do you do? Nothing ever comes free. There's always a catch, my friends. Oh, I'm wondering, is it a mystery? I love mysteries. Like, there was this one time I read this book about a talking dog, and he had a whole bunch of friends, and they went around and they solved a whole bunch of mysteries, and it was a whole... <sighs> whole thing it was really really cool and so oh and then there was this one time there were these kids in this box cart right and then they solved mysteries too and then there was this one where there was a ghost but he wasn't really a ghost so yeah, yeah. you know you liked it loser you know you liked it. it was yeah. the best it will it was the absolute best mystery known to man the key I, is is that it was the shopkeeper all along <laughs> well, you didn't need to spoil it for us, did you? <laughs> well, it's why not? Story. That way you want to read it more. See how we got to the end. You have told this story many times on our journey. We will eventually read this book, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, I can let you borrow one. But you yes. got to give it back. <clears throat> because the last time I gave someone something, they disappeared and I didn't see them. Like, to be honest, you guys are my longest lasting friends that I've ever had. It's really weird. <laughs> you, you know, that's, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's good. That's good. You're See? a good friend. You're good. You're... <laughs> my, my, my fox character, small fox like white Arctic fox, just points his nose past the rabbit and goes. Whoosh. He starts walking away as if this is normal banter and knowing that they will eventually catch up. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Mm. I think um, Moonstone just sort of like uh, hops ahead of uh, Eke. Um. I will continue talking as I follow about the next murder mystery from a dinner <laughs> that I found out. Like, I read this beautiful book from this library. It was jewel-encrusted, and I will continue to tell that story as while, we go. While she rambles on about that, Loser will kind of just be sauntering in the back, just kind of easy as it goes, going with the breeze, not a care in the world. The fox will outwardly look like it does not enjoy the story, but there will be a small smirk as he recalls some of his other companions in the past who are ranting and raving and how he actually appreciates these moments in time, knowing that they are indeed finite. I love it. He used to walk forward. So y'all are y'all are walking towards uh, this theater in town. Um, it's very easily to e easy to tell which building the theater is. You see the classic kind of uh, theater masks, the smiling uh, one that's laughing, and then the sad one, the tragedy and comedy. Um, over the door, and you see a marquee uh, that does correspond with the ticket that you have. Um, there is somebody uh, using a little stick. Uh, it looks like a, a little uh, person looks like a turtle, uh, a, a bipedal turtle. Uh, they have their marquee up, and they're just slowly moving this stick and placing uh, each letter uh, in place. And you can see kind of the first five letters of what you assume the phrase is probably sold out um, and you see a couple of disgruntled citizens uh, walking away from the ticket booth uh, hanging their heads uh, mumbling to themselves as they do so hmm. oh that's unfortunate do you think that soul is a new play in town anyone 
No. Um, I would like to sit on my cannon that I have because I get an Eldritch cannon, and I want to have feet, and I want it to walk for me because I'm kind of tiny, and I don't like to walk for too long because I get exhausted, and it's really hard. I love it. Well, so yeah, what is your what does your cannon look like? What's it look like when your your character's on the cannon? Um, have you ever seen those walking duck toys? <laughs> yes. The ones with the, the ones with the interlocking feet. With the with the wind up. Imagine yeah, that yeah. wind up and it's just kind of going. And then um I have my little homunculus guy that comes with me. He's like a little tiny construct and he's just like a little robot and he just kind of moves. He doesn't he's just for show. I love it. For the kids to play around with. It's mostly to lure more friends toward me so we can make more friends. There's a, distinct, there's a distinct sound to that, 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 the grind. It's like so nostalgic to the eighties. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. So you're, you're doing this to attract some friends. Why don't you, um, why don't you make a, uh, a, either a persuasion or a performance check? Either would be appropriate here. I think. Uh... As these kind of, you know, downtrodden citizens are, 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 you know, leaving, they couldn't get into the play. They were hoping for a show. That will be a 17. A 17, yeah. So so they're walking, they're hanging their heads, and then they see this spectacle, this this reminiscent of the 80s. Maybe in D, &D it's probably the 1480s, but <laughs> we'll say that maybe there were some uh, some leg warmers and, and different things there as well. Uh, they look at it, you see a, 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 a little kid come up and they're just enraptured by the display uh, and, and they seem very excited and, and ask you some questions about, about the cannon that they probably don't know is a cannon, <laughs> but your walking machine. Um, this is my cannon. I call him Ducky. He's so fun. Like he walks and then he blows things up. He's really good at blowing things up. There was this one time I blew up this ghoul. Like his head was just gone. It's crazy, right? Like, and instead of doing it, like we could have just got the priest that was with us at the time. But like I told the priest not to do it because like that would be too easy. And being easy, like, no, that's not fun for anyone. We have to challenge our brain cells. And I keep going on and on and as, on. And as on you're saying on. this, you watch like the, the little kid's eyes just getting bigger and bigger and they're nodding and their their parent kind of grabs their hand and, and pulls them along to, to to go on. As you start talking about the cannon and blowing up ghouls, uh, the, oh, the, the parents oh, are just like, come on, come on. Away as, from as, the they, as they slide away, I would like to take their place and kind of lean in close and like, it, it kind of it walks more like a like a goose. Oh, than a maybe duck. maybe that's like, why they left. Like, maybe it's more you know you know you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, yeah. It just, was an inaccurate description of my foul friend. <laughs> Who has oh, the foul letter? friend? <laughs> <laughs> Which that. one of us has the letter? That's a good question. Uh, so I'd say each of you are holding a ticket from the letter. The, the, the letter inside of it had these, these different uh, theater tickets bound inside of it. Um, we've, we've checked these things, right? Like, Have you checked your ticket? I don't know. Have you checked I, your ticket? I will check my ticket. I will pull out a ticket and take a look. Sure. Uh, what, what are you trying to, to, to find out with your ticket? Um, being someone of a uh, <clears throat> magical and... Um, fate-oriented mindset, my fox will hmm, give it a sturdy eye and maybe figure out a little detect magic or something on it just to see yeah, if there's yeah. something foot, illusionary or uh, chanting or... Yeah, yeah. I yes. think Moonstone is going to hover over your, uh, your shoulder and just mm -hmm. sort of you know, lean in and, and point and say, oh, it looks like that, that T isn't crossed properly. <laughs> so while uh, Felicia and Loser are uh, talking to this these this kind of gathering crowd, the two of you are pulling up and kind of looking at this ticket. Uh, you cast your detect magic spell on it. The ticket doesn't seem to be magical. No auras radiate from it. Um, though maybe in a way it is enchanting. You notice little uh, flecks of, of glitter and small attention to detail on this ticket. There's probably glitter in your fur on your hands now that you've touched the tickets and you just have to kind of, it's there forever. That's how glitter works. We agree to this. <laughs> um, but it doesn't seem magical. It just seems to be an admin one to the ticket. I'm going to scratch a bit of the glitter. You scratch away the glitter. Yeah, Moonstone is putting it into her ears. At this <laughs> point. Into, into Moonstone. <laughs> Better fit for you, friend, than me. Not magical, not a trap, at least not yet. I am weary of all things. 
We must okay. proceed with caution. Now you leave me to lighten up a bit. Ew. He's a, he, hey, it's you would know him as a <laughs> as a bit of a panic case. He's always thinking that we're part of something bigger, but something bigger often means danger. So he's he's the uh, he's the anchor, the sink of the team that will be sort of like weary about everything, even though all of his companions are happy-go-lucky and fun. He's <laughs> a little more into it. So his dry humor goes, hmm, we shall see, loser. He says this, uh, the Eke says this very serious thing and with it blows a bit of glitter uh, onto you. You're very <laughs> glittery at this point. Uh, oh, yes. And you all absorbed. see that. She's just twirling around in it. <laughs> you're just admiring all of the glitter and you see you, you feel very sparkly and mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the crowd is sort of star star starting to, to die down around the ticket booth. It looks mostly empty. The people that are have been walking up and saw that the, the show is now, you can see that the the turtle folk is onto like another letter. It's a lot, Ooh. a little bit more clear that it's sold out. Uh, There's and more. Hold on, guys. I stop and I stare. <laughs> <laughs> you you say yeah. You say there's more. You can see this this uh, uh, this uh, turtle is slowly turning his head uh, to to look at you all as he's putting this last T up there. A friend of yours, I say to Moonstone. The turtle, a friend of yours. Oh, I haven't heard that one before. Hmm. I'll hold the ticket up. Are you sure that we're sold out, turtle? Uh, the turtle uh, looks uh, at your your ticket and then just kind of points down to the ticket booth, and you can see kind of this this teenage uh, tiefling is like getting ready to put this little uh, sign up in the front, like t you know, booth closed or whatever. Uh, they're closing up their uh, their drawers, scooping some some uh, silver pieces uh, into a small box, uh, and uh, kind of getting ready to close the box. Whenever uh, you you hold up that ticket, uh, she looks up and sees the uh, the turtle um, point down, and uh, she says, "Are y'all coming in or out?" I look at my companions. You I got mean, tickets. One ticket. Four a tickets. Mystery. The mystery. No, this is a love story. Fantastic. The mystery was last week. I drop the ticket and I proceed to walk in. You drop the ticket on the front. Uh, you you walk in. You you part through. You see a, a, a very tall uh, human bouncer there. She's kind of standing guard. She see looks over at the tiefling through the booth, who gives a nod, having put your ticket down, and then ushers towards uh, the uh, row for you. What about the rest of you all? Moonstone has hopped in as well. I huh? very sulkily hop on my cannon and just let it take me inside with my little robot, like, coming behind me. Like, oh, that's not a mystery. And I would like to keep <laughs> sauntering, just kind of going with the wind, slow walking <laughs> gates, kind of nonchalantly hand my ticket, look at the turtle. Hey, it's you. Follow Felicia. So you all, you all uh, kind of shuffle in the tiefling. Uh, you know, she she kind of rolls her eyes as she takes these very these four last minute tickets, stacks them up, and then and puts them uh, uh, into the box as well, and then puts a little uh, sign there that says like "Be back after the show." Uh, you move past this uh, usher who looks curiously at the device you're riding, uh, but then kind of shrugs and and lets it go and. Uh, points over to a row of uh, four seats uh, right next to an uh, an aisle way um, that you all can watch the show uh, from. I'll sit and I'll patiently wait for what he believes is the inevitable disaster to happen. He said, "There's like a, there's someone chewing gum next to you." It's rather loudly as they're getting ready for the show to start can see candles uh, being lit towards the stage and putting these like metal uh, I, things around it to direct the light. I want to sit in one of the middle seats. Okay. <laughs> Where do you put your uh, your duck contraption? Um, he, my duck contraption will be kind of like a footrest and then my little robot will just kind of sit in my lap like a little toy. <laughs> okay, I love it. Does the duck contraption make duck sounds as well as the little wind up noise? I mean, probably not. Okay. You see probably. that just 
as you're like getting settled, there's some people like turning back uh, as this like machine is is moving. Some of the chairs are like bowing forward uh, as you're moving it around, but it settles uh, quite nicely into the area. I would like to sit on the actual back of the chair since I'm only three feet tall. I don't want to sit. Okay. I want to sit back here. But in doing so, I'd like to reach into one of my many uh, holy scrappy pockets because I'm a I'm a urchin here. I'm a or Kermit, I mean, and pull out some carrots. And I want to hand some carrots to Moonstone, and then I want to <laughs> hand like uh, uh, like a soft boiled egg to Eke. <laughs> I kind of just want to lean back as far as I can without falling off the back of this chair and just enjoy egg. the show. The egg goes in front of that guy. His whiskers just he slowly plucks it out. I think, um, yeah. Thank you. Moon, Moonstone okay. is like very noisily going, and her her little her little um her bottom foot is just pattering um, as she's <laughs> chewing. So she's making more noise than the gum chewer, I think, at this point. Yeah. So there's the gum chewer. There's there's the the cracking of carrots. The uh, the smell of a soft boiled egg. <laughs> Uh, coming into the road, it's like the worst array of, of movie theater snacks that there can possibly be in one little area. Um, <laughs> but slowly the lights begin to, to die down and, and the show begins. And, and before it does, you see this, um, this kind of rosy-cheeked man step out. Um, he's uh, wearing this large uh, scarf, has a, a beret on, uh, holds himself in a, a very kind of high posture and regard and struts out onto the stage and begins to to talk about the show uh boasting that it it will uh you know excite and and will uh, affect your heart and cause it to plummet in your chest and and soar into your your mind and beyond it's kind of talking up the show uh and Isn't says that as good as a mystery uh do you say that out loud I sure do. I don't know people skills. Uh, he he looks puzzled and uh, uh, kind of cups his hand over, and you see a kind of like a boom sound, and a spotlight like pops up on your y'all's area. Uh, they see a herringon uh, holding a carrot, a, a arctic fox uh, uh, finishing a soft boiled egg, the contraptions, and and loser shielding uh, his face. Uh, in the seat, um, says, e -e -e "Excuse me, did you did you ask if this was a mystery?" No, I said, "Is this going to be as good as a mystery?" Like I love a good mystery. There was this uh... one book I read. It had like a whole bunch of demons and angels, but then like it was kind of about a code that you had to break, right? But no one really understood that until the very end when they found the mystery thing in a box. Felicia, and then they... Felicia. Yes. It is customary to remain quiet during a performance. Oh, but the performance hasn't started yet, so I thought it would be okay if I just put in my like expertise of mysteries. I so, would like to cast silence. He looks, <laughs> he looks like disturbed at what's happening. He's like listening to the entire plot of the Da Vinci Code. I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As, as it as it begins to, to go out, he's kind of struck. He, like this hasn't happened to his performance before. Uh, and and you say you cast silence. I do. I'd like to cast silence centered on me, uh, and I'd like to wave to performer and like. Can we not hear it now? It, I I'm pretty sure silence means like yeah that no one yeah. there's like no sound from this area. So I will climb down to a different area and just kind of just get outside of the globe just to hear and just lean out. So like you move, you move a little bit outside the area. You're probably tapping some people as you move out of the the aisle. Um, and, oh, he doesn't uh, care. He'll just the, the director, uh, the director is playwright Reginald, uh, uh, who's introduced themselves. Uh, says, uh, "I guess I didn't have any more questions." Well, um, I can assure you all, it will be much better than my last mystery, and will be even better than the next, which is uh, uh, it's coming uh, very soon. Um, uh, quite possibly next week uh, or the one before and he kind of like tugs at his uh, uh, scarf for a moment and looks up at one of the boxes you can kind of see like a, a very businessy looking uh, group in there who, as as Reginald is talking about his next 
uh, play. Uh, they seem very interested, but also a, a little bit annoyed. Um, I say, may, may I insight to see if there's any more information from maybe? Sure. Yeah. Maybe give me an insight check. Uh, never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's go with a straight four. <laughs> a straight four. Nothing. Nothing on a four, unfortunately. Uh, you 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 can get the sense from that that Reginald looks nervous, um, but you're not sure what else from that. Uh, I look back to Moonstone. Hmm. Uh, Reginald then uh, steps off of the of the stage. He walks off. He kind of looks over his, his shoulder, still kind of looking, and 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 sees uh, Felicia still kind of talking, but there's no sound coming out. Uh, and uh, moves off. You see the curtains close and then open, and then this this play starts about this person, uh, this hiker of sorts that uh, climbs a small hill uh, every day uh, to see their muse. Uh, this this spirit this 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 love story there's a there's a tug of heartstrings uh, it it is it's actually a surprisingly good performance that you'd expect in a town of this size um, but whether or not your character I mean uh, how how would your character feel if they had to sit through uh, a a rom com play um, it's up to you. It seems like it seems like uh, Eke is probably on the verge of falling asleep. I mean, uh, it was kind of obvious that the guy was going to go with her because the other guy, like he was clearly a what we like to call jerk. You know what I mean? He didn't really care about her feelings. Like this is the easiest mystery to solve. Of course, she was going to pick. <laughs> looking guy from the farm of course of course the gods would bless that you know what i'm saying everyone <laughs> you guys hear what i'm saying why is no one understanding this this was not a shock to anyone that this was going to happen was this a shock to you loser <laughs> i would like to be wiping somebody away says the did, tears. did you just call that guy a loser like it comes out from somewhere <laughs> else in the stands i did it's when I maintain visual, like like as I'm watching the show, I'd like to subtly look up at the the box that the fella tugging his beard was looking at because I want to just see if there's any weirdness going on. Like they're scrutinizing the performance, they're not happy with something. Like yeah, that yeah. was odd to me. So I would like to just take some of my time with my hidden eyes to just look up, you know? Yeah. But so you start doing that before before we get to that loser were you gonna were you gonna say anything after that oh i was just saying i would be wiping away tears from the rom-com story okay it reminds Very me touching. of my lost love that i never got to experience and it is it's really touching and i hate it when felicia ruins the moment i'll even be like oh just and i'll get up and kind of just walk away to where eke is and okay. <laughs> i'm in the middle <laughs> <laughs> you have to get past felicia what about moonstone i think moonstone uh after after what happened and after eke gave her sort of a glance i think she uh you're just gonna see like the remnants of the of the carrot there and she'll have uh sort of tried to stealth off uh, okay and find a way to get up uh Wonderful. Okay, so then, location. so then, while Felicia and uh, Loser are kind of uh, going back and forth, we have we have Eke who's looking up at that box now. Eke, did you want to use any sort of magic, or when you said your your eyes, are you just making like just perceiving straight? I would like to just perceive for now. I want to see. You said it, there was a, a thing with business like people, and I'm yeah. going to see if if from this vantage I can make out what they look like. Yeah, Thanks yeah. For, post the show to go see them, you know? Or yeah, just so the show's kind of still winding down. It's it's still dark in the theater. So why don't you give me a perception check? All right. I shall roll the dice. Oh, because we like rolling dice. It is a natural 20, which is almost diametrically opposite the last time I rolled. Uh, perception uh, would be a uh, 23. 23, yeah. You, you look up there uh, and you notice that uh, you see kind of as the show is wrapping up, you see uh, somebody in kind of a, a like a very noble-ish tunic. It's, you know, gilded along the ends. It flickers a little bit off some of the, the, the small lights still in the theater. Uh, someone with a, a kind of a large, like twirling mustache. And they're there with a couple of others. They kind of stand up. One of them, they've had a meal during the play. You see one of them throw down uh, a, a napkin kind of uh, in a huff and stand up and 
and they walk off. Uh, it, you almost hear them like like say something like you can almost make out looking at their lips that they said the like the word again uh, kind of angrily uh, and they they walk off. Uh, meanwhile, we had uh, Moonstone who has snuck off. So Moonstone, why don't you start by giving us a stealth check and then we'll we'll see where you wanted to go with that. That is an eighteen. 18 yes so that's that's pretty good for sneaking about a, a theater uh you would be able to kind of you're ducking under you're not obscuring anybody's view uh now what is it where is it you want to go uh, as this performance is wrapping up uh she wanted to head to to that i guess whatever that alcove or seating area was where that where that individual was yeah like the private box or yeah. are you okay yeah so you you are kind of moving up there uh, as as uh, Eke is seeing this person kind of throw down their 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 napkin. Uh, you you see you get to this kind of stairway that's that's got a couple of guards posted outside of it. Um, you see a few of these uh, business people kind of walking down. Uh, there's a number of nobles. Um, of uh, various fantasy ancestries. Uh, most of them are human. Uh, and you hear them talking to one another. You hear one of them say like, I can't believe we paid for this. And another one is saying, this show is still running. This is the sixth time I've seen this. When is his next play coming? Uh, as they kind of round this corner and walk past their guards, their guards kind of turn and follow them uh, as they move back towards the lobby. Um, they're kind of leaving the, the show a little bit early. Um, and and the people who are complaining are, they're the ones that we saw earlier, right? Yeah, they're the ones okay. up in the box, yeah. Okay, so I think uh, I think Moonstone is going to quietly sort of trail them. Oh, you wanna trail them? Okay, yeah. You, <laughs> Just you, for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you you follow them out. They, they kind of sit and talk for a bit in the lobby. Um, you see one of them say, uh, uh, well, why don't you make a perception check, actually? <laughs> You're kind of sleuthing about the theater. The, 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 the people are just kind of starting to leave their seats. Uh, 16. 16, yeah. You hear, you hear one of them say, um, we can go to his office right now. Uh, and another one says, don't you think I've already tried that? He doesn't open up after the show. I'm pretty sure he locks up and leaves. Uh, and they say, all right, then we'll come early tomorrow. And he better have a new show by then. Um, I think Moonstone is very quickly going to look into her uh, satchel, uh, pull out a ring, uh, slip it on, um, and you know, just arrange her glitter a little bit more um, on, her, on her hands and arms and, and approach, the, approach the group. Um, and and just sort of say, um, pardon. So you kind of you kind of step up. You see this this the this that same one. The, the guy who threw his napkin down. He's wearing this deep red tunic. It's got these these gilded lapels on it. Basically, his hair has this this kind of smooth sheen. It almost like looks like you're looking at like a Ken doll. That all of the hair is almost one piece and shiny. Uh, he kind of turns towards you with these very well manicured uh, eyebrows and kind of raises one and says, yes. Well, I, I couldn't help but notice that, um, that there's a bit of disdain and, and to be quite frank with you, it, it really is not quite, quite on par with what I was expecting. Um, she puts her paw out and there's like this beautiful signet ring um, mm. and says, um, Duchess of uh, Bornsdale. Hmm. Uh, why don't you make a deception check real quick? <laughs> Duchess. A 13. A 13. So see, uh, his eyebrow gets a little higher. He looks back at the others for a second uh, and then kisses the ring and says, nice to meet you, Duchess. I am Duke Mal. Uh, and he uh, kind of <clears throat> clears his throat and you see someone step out from behind him, repeats a number of novely titles uh, that sound very official, but also sort of uh, not that official. 
Um, he says, I am one of the foolish producers of tonight's show. I'm glad that you agree that it was a bit subpar. I can't believe we paid for this. Well, I can't believe we, we traveled this far to, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've heard so many wonderful things. Hmm. Yes, uh, we, that's why we funded him to begin with. Uh, uh, Reginald does write the best plays uh, uh, along the Sword Coast, but to have a show go on for six weeks is just absurd. <laughs> Don't you agree? <laughs> Preposterous. And yeah, as you say that, the others like <laughs> very nobly. They chime in for a bit and uh, uh, very gaggly for, for a moment. And uh, he says, if you're thinking in it, investing in this show i would advise you to move your money elsewhere well thanks for the tip she says and she you know pats her little her little pink nose and and then she says ta and hops away well ta ta and he uh, waves and somebody gives you a card and uh uh they kind of move their little gaggle over outside the place and uh meanwhile the show has uh almost all wrapped up half of the the people are moving outside of their seats uh and uh uh, uh loser has finished drying uh, his eyes and has stepped out into the to the aisle way uh, uh see Felicia, I, told you, I told you that's what was going to happen it was very obvious this was so, so like this was not better than a mystery like my robot here robot I wish right? I can, wish she would have fell in love better? with her ugly friend instead. <sighs> what? What? <clears throat> <laughs> uh, you you see a couple people like nodding in in approval of your your assessment of the film uh, as they walk by, um, and uh, Eke maybe looks a little uh, interested in the box, uh, looking up the now empty uh, box. Uh, and uh, uh, Moonstone is nowhere to be seen. It's probably uh, on her way back at the moment, but you just see a, a half-eaten carrot sitting in her chair. Yeah, knowing that she will uh, she will be returning, um, I will maintain my seat and wait for Moonstone to come back. This is something very common that she does, so I will just wait patiently and enjoy the regaled stories of Felicia speaking about the obvious plot flaw in this story. I mean, it is clear. So I mean, he will pretend to ignore be, her, but he will be listening to her. Worst mystery. Let's be honest. Like we all know about all the dresses that she tried on. We saw this, right? We totally saw that it didn't matter how many dresses were there, that she was going to pick the right guy instead of the jerk that she was engaged to, while right? She's, while she's talking right? about the dresses, I'd like to look down into my potato sack rags <laughs> that have holes everywhere. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> yeah, the dresses. It, is, it doesn't matter how many dresses you own. Love is love. And if you find it, bam, you win. True yeah. words have never been spoken. Moonstone uh, uh, wants to just like sort of hop in there if she can. <laughs> Love it. You hop, you hop in, Herring Gun yeah. Moonstone, as as the kind of finishing uh, Felicia finishes that line about dresses and true love, and uh, yeah. Loser is looking at his clothes and uh, the brooding hop, Eke. Hop sort of behind them and put her head between uh, their two shoulders. What did and, you find out? Uh, she's going to say, "Do you want a mystery for real?" Ooh, that's way more entertaining than this garbage. I hand her a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> she just grabs it and starts munching on it. Yeah, so you're you're eating this carrot as you uh, uh, begin to, I'm assuming, divulge uh, what you saw earlier. Yes. Uh, how do you tell them? What does it sound like when you recap the events? Uh, she's she's going to. I, I think Moonstone will just say, "Well, I I uh, discovered the the fellow who's funding this is a, is a duke of sorts. Uh, his his name is Duke Mal. It sounds a bit." Well, fake to me, but what do I know? Um, and um, the fellow who wrote the play, Reginald, well, he's in a bit of a bind. You mean Ooh. like getting fired or killed? I'm not quite certain of that, but they're going to have words with him in the morning because um, this 
this play has been on for six weeks. Well, that seems about normal. I could watch it every day for years. Like, I've read the same book every day for the past 14 years. And I'm only 17. How crazy is that? I've read multiple books in multiple days. That's just what happens. You know, sometimes we call it, um... Um, a reread, maybe you've heard of it. Um, it's when <laughs> you have nothing else to do, and so you just reread it over again, right? Well, but you sometimes don't understand you them. I put a carrot in Felicia's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> moneyed, moneyed people expect creative things all the time, and uh, they expect things to be churned out at their whim. But the show <laughs> sold out. Aren't they making money? Runestone, oh. do you believe that this run is too long or standard for this type of performance? No, I'm not um, a producer of any sort, really. So, Justice, would yeah. my character in any capacity or form, maybe a history check, know about? Yeah, the I was actually going to ask if you want, if one of y'all wanted to make a history check. But what? Yeah, what is it you want to know with the history check? I just want to know, like, is six weeks like? Is this like? Yeah, yeah. You make know, you when, go ahead and make your history check. Is this like ridiculous? Uh, fifteen plus my history is twenty-two. Yeah, six weeks sounds really excessive for a play in a town of this size, though. Honestly, if you think about it, this was still a sold out show. And Daggerford yeah. is a pretty big fantasy town, um, but it's not like Waterdeep. So to be able to sell out the Silver Star Theater, that's the name of the theater you're in, um, that's that's still pretty impressive, uh, for, for, especially to sell out any show after six weeks. You're not sure how it many times this show airs a day. It's probably a fantasy Friday. I don't know if there's some Friday in the Forgotten Realms. There probably is, but it's Forgotten not Realms awesome. Fridays. Forgotten Realms Friday. Yeah, yeah. Of course, they have great uh, celery sticks and wings. For or Friday. Favorite Friday. Favorite Friday. Yeah. Uh, uh, but no, it is strange that the show has gone on this long, and you you have heard Reginald's name a few times. It's a pretty famous playwright, from what you can tell. Hmm. And this play was like objectively from their character's perspective would you would you say like it was impressive enough like this is like wow i could totally see why it beat for six weeks uh it was it was pretty good despite pretty losers good. opinion it was <laughs> fantastic it was it was pretty good it's good it's it's one of the better plays you've seen even if you didn't like the subject material it's a terrible I, mystery but it was a good love story i <laughs> would like to take myself my cannon and my robot and I would like to perform how I thought the show would end on stage <laughs> while they're talking about this because I <laughs> feel like I could do a better job. Like, this is how you tell a mystery. And then it just turns into Romeo and Juliet by the end of it, where the robot is uh, like Juliet in the, in the, the robot, is, Yeah, is taking some liqueur and yeah. passes. And I'm just kind of directing it. And I'm like, see, this is this is a way better mystery of how this could have ended. I applaud. <laughs> I applaud. Bravo. <laughs> and while she's doing that, I'll approach Loser and say, I need you to be honest with me, friend. If do you believe that this show is worth its six week run objectively and not just because we know you're a love staff? <laughs> well, um, maybe it's because I spent the last so many years sleeping in a wet dent, uh, ditch, but uh, this seems to be the highlight of my life, watching these people fall in love on this stage. That guy will, like, flat face, turn to Moonstone. <sighs> what do you think? <laughs> I'm sorry. When when Eke turns, I'd like to kind of like raise up another egg. <laughs> okay. You're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> when he tur when he turns to Moonstone, he will just instinctively reach back and grab it like this is normal. Yep. What do you think, friend? Well, this isn't a a tiny little Hamlet, but I'm not out. buying it. I don't buy this at all. Something is afoot, and not well, just yours. Apparently, Reginald's office is uh, is locked up in the evenings, but um, we can get. I past feel that. like having a bit of fun. 
Me too. Do you remember um, that in your original letter, um, Reginald actually invited you to see uh, him after the show? Oh, that's right. But I like I like watching y'all dissect the mystery. So. Um, <laughs> I genuinely feel like the fastest way to the back is behind this curtain right here. And I will say, come on, guys, let's go. And I will proceed to start trying to find a path through the curtain that I feel like would be shut by now. And Are just there anybody watching? By. Any guards watching? There's like some ushers cleaning up, but it's one of them is that that teenage tiefling, and she does not look like she cares seeing y'all <laughs> on stage. She's cleaning up popcorn. You see her pick up like half of a carrot. She's like, "What the hell? Who's eating Ooh, carrots like during the show?" Uh, you take it out of her <laughs> hand. Uh, it's there's like a, a bit of like like red hair on it from the oh. carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and start cleaning that off, save it for later, put it in the old pocket. Top pocket Wonderful. Right there. Uh, Moonstone's going to ask the uh, the tiefling, uh, uh, pardon me. Um, She's got a little uh, like name tag that says Jan. <laughs> Jan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do, do you know where Reginald's office is? Yeah. Can you point a hair and gone out? She looks... Uh, she says, uh, actually, the fastest way is right through that curtain there and points uh, <laughs> where you can see Felicia <laughs> on stage pawing at the curtain. There has uh, to be an entrance somewhere over here. Like, now where did all those people go? And finally, <laughs> you feel the thick curtain part in one area and you're pushed forward and there's like another curtain behind it. And now you're between the two of them. And as you look up, <laughs> you just see the back of Felicia like moving amongst the curtain. <laughs> I will climb under the curtains and find my way out and then try to guide her somehow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. You all you all begin moving through um Moonstone, I'm guessing. Are you is that the direction you're gonna go as well? Yeah. So yeah, I think she regardless, she's gonna try breaking into his office. Just <laughs> wonderful. <to practice. laughs> um, so you all move through these curtains. Uh you pass a number of like uh stage hands that are finishing things up, uh, actors and actresses who are who are taking off their makeup. Uh, uh, loser, you pass a beautiful dress hanging uh, alone on a, a a little like kind of cart that's that's being moved along. You see a stage and move it there, and then looks like they remembered something and they walk off in the under direction. I would just like to go up to the. I've never seen something so beautiful, so I just want to go up to it and start just like feeling the fabric and like up against my skin. It's, like, oh. it's very silky. There's a layer of tulle over it, so it's it's it's. It's got a nice kind of texture to it. And I am filthy. I am just dirty. So like when I rub up against it, like there's some stuff that's going to be left behind on the dress. It's obviously got some soot and um, some mud. Yeah. I, so like I just kind of, once I notice that, I said, oh, what and I, just kind of proceed past it. Would there be a chance of me seeing that by chance? Uh, that's up to Loser. Loser, were you being sneaky about this? No. No. Yeah, you no. yeah, you see this plane is that you see loser pull his face off of it and there's a face print of his now on this dress. Ooh. I would like to make a mental note to maybe have Moonstone steal that so I can make my good friend loser an outfit out of that dress. I mean, we can only <laughs> okay. use like half of it. I mean, yeah. and actually I start like I actually just beeline away because i'm very like add so i go back over to the dress i'm like well he's only three feet and i can make a top and a bottom out of this and just as you're kind of admiring this dress eke is like skulking along the floor underneath like several uh <laughs> curtains uh and moonstone is is falling behind and you you all are standing like it, it, this dress is this isolated moment and then there's a hallway ahead okay so then and then we'll just hurry and then um does anyone have a dagger? Uh, Moonstone Let's hops. do with it. Moonstone um, hops over. I want to do stuff. If you're going to cut the dress, just steal it. Well, I um, only need a little bit of the dress. How, how much do you need? Well, I mean, uh, maybe about... Am I close by? Am I, am I seeing the potential theft? They're like three or four feet away. You've just you realized said, in your horror how many smudge marks you left on the dress. You said I'm, it. You said it it's, I'm just trying to get away from there then. You said, you said it, it's very layered, right? 
Yeah, it's a very layered dress. So she's gonna Moonstone's gonna go under the dress and cut out like three feet from one of the under layers. Yeah, oh you my. you lift up, you cut like a nice uh like a like a uh, like a Michael's uh uh rollout of, <laughs> of the fabric. Uh that area of the dress seems to sink in a little bit now, but otherwise it's not super noticeable, not as noticeable as the face print. <laughs> Good. That's perfect. Now all I need are some metal pieces. And then I just go, I just start trying to wander, like to try to find things. There's some coat with. hangers, some wire coat hangers. Yeah, some coat hangers, that'll do. Um, and Meanwhile, then, I'm just going right toward the office. So you're walking down the hallway. Loser he knows that the mischief is coming. It's too far oh. gone. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. And I, and I try to like hurry and I'm just like kind of throwing <laughs> stuff in the bag now and I'm going to follow the back of the group. I'm in the back. And I then I, I'm, I'm a little tired so I hop on my cannon and grab my robot. <laughs> yeah, there's just this like like jingling sound of all the metal things you picked up in that like that mad dash to grab things and like coat hangers sticking out. Uh, 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 Moonstone is, is wrapping up a little bit of dress. Uh, as y'all proceed down this hallway, you see a, a lavish door that has like in calligraphy director uh, written over top of it. There's a costume room to the left, a green room to the right, uh, and uh, the door is shut. Oh, it looks like there's a light on underneath. I knock. Uh, you hear someone, <coughs> who is it? That was terrible. <laughs> I'm not an actor, I'm the director. Ah, I mean, that's the guy. I mean, I'm I'm very busy. Uh, um, uh, I place you will have paper. your play tomorrow. I place the paper with the personal invitation, and I slowly slide it under the door. You hear the what time paper. Time is the play tomorrow. You hear the paper uh, uh, pulled up. It says the play is at. Oh, and then you hear like a series of latches. The door opens up, and the rosy-cheeked man uh, is standing in front of you. Again, uh, though his scarf is a little bit more disheveled than before, uh, and you see a bunch of stacks of paper on this ornate desk behind him, an inkwell and a quill, uh, uh, and just the floor is just littered with crumpled up pieces of paper all over. There's a bin overfilling with torn pieces of paper. Uh, uh, different books are open to different areas. Uh, and little sketches of, of things scribbled on the walls. He says, come in, come in, quickly, quickly. And he, he kind of looks out both ways uh, down this hallway, trying to make sure there's nobody there. In, I would like in. to immediately go to the quill and inspect the feathers on it while not even bother taking the ink out, just put it all over my hands. Just like, is this a chicken? <laughs> You're getting this grime all over this nice quill <laughs> pen. As you weird. touch it, it mats up. It's like a wet uh, feather now. Uh, it's not a, a chicken. It's like a peacock feather. Like this quill is probably like like thirty dollars oh, in real life at least. Uh, but now it's like all grimy. Uh, he he like turns. He's still got his hand on the door, and like his jaw is just open and he, he like uh, like a little bit of like chewing gum like falls out of his mouth and, and sits on the floor. I go is pick it? up the chewing gum. This is exactly what I needed. And I go back. <laughs> <laughs> you begin assembling the dress. I start assembling. Um, uh, do all, all of y'all come in, I'm guessing? Oh, yeah, yeah, go right yeah. there. Okay, he shuts the door behind you. He, you see him latch up uh, three things. There's not as many latches as he made sounds for latches. You get the sense maybe he's a little theatrical even in that regard. Um, he says, uh, please, please, uh, sit, sit on my decorative pillows there. And he kind of walks over and uh, moves some uh, crumbled pieces of paper aside. He says, here, here, uh, uh, thank you so much for coming. I, I appreciate it. Did you enjoy the show? And he, 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 he like looks anxious about your response, puts his hand over his mouth. I would like to uh, walk right up to him and shake his hand. Just like, I'll, I'll grab his hand and just shake his Wonderful. He like leans back from your hand Wonderful. for a second and then takes it and then like looks at his own hand. It's like, it's like interacting with like pig pen from uh, Charlie Brown. He definitely uh, has ink all over it. It's has ink mind. all over it. He kind of looks back at his uh, priceless peacock quill, uh, <laughs> disturbed uh, for a moment. I'm going to walk up to the quill. Would you be able to think better if this was 
restored. Would, would, it, would it be able to think better? My eyes will suddenly start to spin in like weird cogs of time. And, it, and it, almost like an imperceptible second, Aquila is completely restored back to how it was moments ago sitting on the desk. Uh, he looks amazed at what just happened. Uh, I, look, I look at Loser and I say, please, don't touch anything. <laughs> My mistake, you know. I would like to put this brand new poncho, like it's just kind of a hole in the head situation here. It has like little metal bits kind of strung through. And I'm like, for you, loser. Did she and call you a loser? <laughs> it's, it's what my mama called me. And I would like to take the first gift I've ever received in my life. And I'd like to sit down in a cushion and let the emotions overwhelm me and just cry for the second or third time that day. <laughs> you, you, like... yeah, you, you put this, uh, this, this new, very ornamented uh, dress poncho uh, uh, device over you. It's, it flows, fits you very well. Uh, you know, uh, Felicia, why don't you go ahead and make a, uh, a, a check with your tool proficiency to see how, how good this looks. Uh, that would be in my... It'll probably be your intelligence plus twice your proficiency bonus. Oh, perfect. That makes life so much easier. Uh, yep, math. <laughs> uh, that'll be a 22. 22, yes. It's a, do you wanna, do you wanna describe it a little bit? Please. Um, from the white wedding dress that was very overrated, if you ask me. Um, A central piece I, of the play, no doubt. <laughs> I mean, I mean, eh, questionable. So I have taken, I, Moonstone took off the inner layer, which is all lacy and beautiful and pristine because the top layer was sheer. So it has the most detail on it. But you see a whole bunch of like rivets that are, may or may not be clothes hangers just twisted in between. So it looks like it's laced with metal. And then you have like uh, some nails that are kind of bent throughout and everything as well. So it gives it that nice little sheen. And then right in the middle where you slide it over your head, there's that piece of gum to tighten it nice, nice and beautifully around loser's neck. Wonderful. Wonderful. There's a nice piece of gum there. Uh, and, and maybe perhaps even a small pocket for that carrot you found earlier. Yes, of course. He likes pockets. Of course, there's plenty of pockets in this thing. This is the best gift I've ever had in my life. Felicia can fix it, baby. That's why they call me Fix It Felicia. Unless you say bye, Felicia, then I never see you again. But it's okay. I find more friends. I'm okay. Reginald. Tell yeah. us more about why he's you... very distracted by what's happening. Uh, he, you see him take out a small notebook and jot something down, and then and then close it. He says, "Yes, yes, I, I'm I'm so glad that you all uh, ha, have have come here to 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 my play. You you did like the show, though, correct?" Um, I'm afraid my heart won't be able to bear it if you didn't like my play. I mean, we have a lot of things that we could work on, especially how um, terrible the ending was. I mean, it yeah. just really was predictable about halfway through that the girl was going to put on the 37 dresses and then she was going to find the right guy and then the gods were going to bless everyone. It, it, it just should have ended with a double death murder. That's what it should have ended with. And slowly, like, his his emotion changes from somebody who's heartbroken to who's convinced that you probably watched a, a different play <laughs> and, and, or something. And uh, he says, well, Oh, uh, uh, fix it, Felicia. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you can fix this play of mine. Actually, I. Well, I'm afraid my muse is gone. I, I, this is, this is my, my play has gone on far too long. I. Well, I have to tell you a secret, and you must swear, swear that you will not tell. And if you swear, I will pay you handsomely, at least. A hundred gold pieces each, each of you. Does that uh, sound worth a secret? Puts her Ox paws. Leans forward. I swear. Go on. Secret, 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 and 
Felicia, will you help Fred's me? Secrets are no fun unless you tell Fix It Felicia. So that's a yes? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Okay. Well, every month I take a trip to Moon Glimmer Lake. You know, the one from the play. And mm -hmm. it's this uh, quiet pond not far from the city. And I camp there. I love to camp there. Now, I can only camp for a few days. My lifestyle demands a, a bit of luxury. I can't sleep in the grass, of course. I have to bring my carriage and my tents. Go and, on. Uh, anyway, I will. I rest here by Lo Moon Glimmer Lake. And as I lay beneath the silvery stars and the soft moonlight, fantastical stories of love and adventure and even mystery, they greeted me in my sleep. They fed my artistic success for years. That's why I, that's why I operate here in Dagobert, to be close to the lake. But some things happen. My past few trips, they haven't turned anything up in their plays. I've had to stretch them longer than ever before. And I'm afraid I don't have any more ideas. I have the worst case of writer's block I've ever had. And now I'm worried that my funders, my producers, my creditors, they're, they're going to start wondering where the money is and where the next show is. They've already begun asking me for it. Every time they come to see my show, they, they demand that there be a new play. And, and frankly, some of them are a little bit unsavory. They have guards, and some of them talk about kneecapping, whatever that is. I assume it's some sort of shuffling move that's done, but it, it doesn't sound fun either way. And, well, I, I need you all to go and figure out what happened to my muse. Um, so you want us to find your block and break it, right? No. No. Hmm. My block? He said writer's block. We he gotta he break said the there's block. a block that we got to break so he can write stuff again. I don't yeah. know how that works with Does brain wanna... stuff. But mm. here's here's the thing. Um, Get us a map. Yes. And we need, what, like half up front? I think that's fair for everyone here in the party. Because we don't know if you're going to be dead when we get back. Obviously, those guys are pretty adamant, according to what... Dead. What? Dead. Reginald. Well, oh, no. Yes, I think I could, yes, I could do half up front. Of, uh, you know, there is this other important detail. Uh-huh. My, my last three trips to Moon Glimmer Lake, I didn't dream at all. In fact, I had a nightmare. I, I dreamt of this. A silver unicorn with a, a, a small green goatee, and it was it was bound by three cackling shadows. <gasps> I, I'm convinced that's probably too dark for my subject audience, so I haven't written a play about it, but maybe I should consider it. You could turn it into a comedy. A, a comedy? Yes, a comedy of the washed-up playwright, maybe. Yes. And then everyone gets the double murder death at the end. This is the murder. Why is there so much death? Which we meet. I write love stories. Reginald. Mm. Reggie, a question, if I may ask. Uh, yes. This muse that you've lost, is it metaphorical or a thing? I don't know. I, I just know I have to sleep by the lake for it to happen. Do you think it could be a real unicorn? Unicorns would, aren't real. <laughs> would my character... <laughs> Unicorns aren't real. I mean, I think not. he's going to to believe in that. So he'll be like, well, nightmares are real and so are dreams. I come from those eras. We should... Oh, boy. Sleep will be different with us, friends. Perhaps it will affect us, too. And there we will gain more clues. You want to go take a nap? <laughs> I is that it? it? <laughs> well, um, I've been sleeping all day and nothing has come to me. I mean, these ideas here, they're all trash. Gestures to all of that. Like every time someone moves in this area, you hear like a <laughs> of papers being knocked around. Well, what does a, 
I'm assuming that because Moonstone is a Herringon, she would know about unicorns and what she might think are hags in this situation. Yeah, you've you yeah, you're a Herringon, right? Yeah, you're you have ties to to the Feywild and and uh uh why don't you would hags be arcana maybe or nature, whichever you'd like. Right. Unless you can unless another one you might think would be more accurate. I'll, I'll do arcana. Oh nope. Nope. She she scared herself thinking about hags. Yeah, maybe it's something about the cackling. Yeah, like it reminds me of hags, but you <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe don't dwell on that too much. He says, uh, so will you all will you all go to Moon Glimmer Lake? Yes. I mean, I read a fantastical book about muses this one time. It was about a musician or what you guys like to call a bard. Uh-huh. Uh, and he lost his muse too, and he was unable to play anything. But come to find out, it was all in himself, right here in his heart and in his brain. I I would like to hand Felicia another treat. I'll just hand some nuts from another pocket. I'll pick out some of the stones, the pebbles, and hand them to her. It's like, oh, I'm not hungry. We'll be happy to do it. <laughs> happy for you for the. the just like, oh, thank you. And I just wipe one more tear. It's like, come I, on, I, Dane. I appreciate it. Your, your, your poncho is so beautiful. It reminds me of the vision I had of, of the dress of the muir in, and uh, I left my heart at Moon Glimmer Lake. A love story, fantastic. You know, any it it looks almost uncanny how similar to the dress oh. it is. It's, well, we ought to be going now. Oh, oh, okay. That's um, our cue. He kind of reaches and he, he grabs uh, y'all's advance of uh, 250 gold. Or wait, wait. I'm counting myself in here. 200 gold. Um, and I then mean, he reaches in and he, uh, he grabs a single uh, silver coin for each of you and he hands it to you. And he says, um, he says that over the years, he's discovered that tossing a coin or two into the lake for good luck, good luck improves the quality of his dreams. Um, he says, uh, if you plan to sleep by the lake, toss a coin in. Thank you. We will come back with news when we have it. Until then, do what you can to stave off the sharks from trying to close down your show and proverbially kneecap you. Proverbially kneecap me, yes. Yes. Um, I will yeah. avoid the, uh, the, the double death killing if yes. I can. Double yes. murder death. Double double murder death. And maybe don't a open the door for anyone but us. Yeah, I read in a book once that kneecapping means removing kneecaps. So maybe that doesn't uh, sound not accurate. A shuffle. <laughs> maybe not just, a shuffle. Which book was this? <laughs> um, it was a book about a mob boss. And by mob boss, I mean it was a whole bunch of dwarves running a factory, right? With a whole bunch of Inequal rights for women and men, but that's not Sounds important terrible. right now. The women started a baseball team and the men got really mad. It's crazy. Don't, I don't worry know what about baseball it. Baseball is, but that sounds very interesting. I'd love it's to read a that sport book. Where people hit a round hard rock with a, a stick. It's insane. Sounds right? like a lot and of then different sports. They had a league of their own, but then all the men came back from fighting in their dwarven war, and then Everyone lived happily ever after because the one lady dwarf and the one male coach dwarf, they caught together and they... But the, the door closes <laughs> us. Wow. AK's already left. He's already he's here. Already this yeah. time, uh, like many, many more latches than is possible. You're pretty sure one of them is just going back and forth uh, to <laughs> sound like more latches. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you hear somebody say, my dress, what happened to my dress? Like off towards the stage. You just see a puff of glitter as uh, as moonshine uh, moonstone just uh, disappears. <laughs> uh, moonstone is just gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm just gonna saunter, just like nonchalant, like <laughs> <laughs> just gonna go off stage. Follow the follow AK. Yeah, you um, you walk. There are a few uh, actors that just kind of as you walk there. 
<laughs> giving you a little bit of a of a of a a look. Why don't you make a um a dis mm, a deception check? Oh, perfect. Or performance, whichever you like. Okay. Where's my d20? There it is. Oh, baby. Let's. <laughs> That's going to be an eighteen. An eighteen. Nice. The the lead actress walks up to you looks intently at your poncha and says i love your poncha <laughs> with my very dirty green skin i would blush my <laughs> ow thank you and then just gonna kind of keep walking and then like maybe like before i go i'd like to almost pass and like kind of over and feel her fabric and kind of like get a little bit of ink on it and be like lovely lovely and then i just keep walking <laughs> She's, she says thank you, and then as you leave, starts to examine her own clothing and <laughs> yeah. match it with the face print. Um, so you all end up outside the theater. Uh, I mean, I'm guessing nothing. No, you don't want to do anything else in the theater before you leave. Uh, okay. And you begin to make your way to uh, Moon Glimmer Lake. Um, it's about a day's ride from the Silver Star Theater. Uh, it's not that far. Um, you can get there by nighttime unless you'd like to stave out and wait until the uh, next day. Here, we'll say you're at like a matinee performance right now. Nice. So, so sorry, we've got a, a rabbit, a herringon, a vulpine fox, a goblin, and then sorry, Felicia, what is your your culture? Your, I I am a Yon T pure blood. Okay, so I was gonna say, one horse could almost do all of us. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, basically, you all get a, a few horses. You uh, uh, one and a half horses, uh, and you uh, <laughs> make your way out to um, Moon Glimmer Lake. Uh, it is a so Moon Glimmer Lake is this kind of uh, idyllic uh, pond. It's very quiet. As you kind of ride up upon the area, you notice that these kind of gloomy trees begin to give way to the almost like spring-like uh, flowered trees. Um, the scent of dew is is heavy around the, the lake. Um, and as you kind of come upon it and you see the uh, the moon rising above you all, you can see where the where the lake gets its name. Uh, it's quite beautiful reflecting off of the lake. Um, it, it almost reminds you of the glitter you saw in the show, that it's always kind of sparkling. The grass is just tall enough so that it's it's beautiful, but not, you know, you're not having to wade through anything. Um, and you can hear just like kind of the, the a gentle croaking of frogs and uh, wildlife in the distance, um, almost to a sense of uh, like a white noise or, a, or almost musical uh, aspect to it. As you come upon uh, upon this lake, um, uh, so you all your horse uh, stops uh, maybe uh, 20, 30 feet from the edge uh, of of the lake, uh, and kind of lets out a horse noise. You know, some I don't know what whatever a horse does. It's not an NPC, so I don't know why I'm focused so much on the horse, but it does horse things. Uh, what do you all do? I will hop off. And go to the edge of the water. Okay. You, you hop just, off, you, you go to the edge of the water. Yep. And then just tap the water. Uh, you kind of lean over the water. And as you look at it, um, you see a reflection in it. Um, I don't know how, how many of y'all have seen SpongeBob. But there's an episode with Handsome Squidward. And it's this scene where Squidward hits his face on something. And he becomes immensely beautiful. You look down at this reflection and you see a very handsome version of yourself. Like, even if your character is already handsome or beautiful, the fox that stares at you up in this in this water is, you know, high cheekbones, chiseled jaw, like could be on the front of like Fox Vanity Fair magazine. Uh, uh, it's just beautiful. And you tap the water and as you do, the fox kind of winks at you. My tail tails will go up. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, does does Moonstone see this as she's sort of hovering over his shoulder? Does you see, see yeah, fox? you see the fox touching the water. Maybe as you come up, you see you see uh, him say "interesting." So does uh, Felicia and Loser. Does the does she see that the 
the reflection sort of winks back at him and, and looks different. Yeah, you, 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 know, you come up, you look down at his reflection, you see it wink, and then you see your own reflection appear kind of behind that one. Same sort of thing, a little bit pushed in that, that, that edge of beauty, a little, just, just a little bit more, almost, um, almost supernaturally so. Mm -hmm. Did you see that moonstone? Yes, I am. Um, well, I think we both look rather, rather nice in this light, don't you? Yes, uncanny so. While they're discussing that, I would like to dive into the lake. <laughs> yeah. I'm too happy to be away from the city and back to normalcy out here in nature. I want to take a bath. <laughs> All right, yeah, so you you dive uh, into the lake. Um, as you kind of dive, this cloud of, of just brown like simmers up to the top of the water. All of the grime on you, all of the, you know, any uh, bits of uh, a carrot floats up to the top. Um, <laughs> oh, I better go and get that and pull it back down with me. <laughs> <laughs> you see the little, little goblin hand pull the carrot down. Um, why don't you uh, give me a perception check? The water is actually a little bit murky underneath, which is kind of strange, um, given how clear it looks. It's almost like a silvery mirrorish surface. I have a 14. A 14, yeah. So uh, as you kind of dive underneath, you hear almost this uh, this sound of a, a horse. Like, I don't know. What is the right sound for a horse that's in distress? Is it neighing? Is it whinnying? I think whinnying is happy. Bray, I think it's braying, maybe. Braying? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going braying. It's horsing. It's horsing. Yeah. Horsing. You hear this horse, <laughs> like, you know, sort of sound. Uh, and it's it's kind of murky, but it's almost like at the center of this lake. Um, what do you do? Sorry. So the, so that the, so the horse goes off. Uh, we see uh, the only only loser hears this. Oh, the oh. rest of y'all just see loser dive into the lake. I would like to poke back up, uh, poke my head back up. Uh, see a goblin head poke up. All you, all you see is a, is a bald spot with like a long ponytail, <laughs> like this greasy black ponytail. In the back. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I um, there's a. You're a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah uh there's a there's a, a, a like a like a like a like a brain like a horse sound underneath the water moonstone looks at eke and and says what do you know about unicorns give me a moment <laughs> What do I know about unicorns? You know, I would I would take either arcana or religion in this case, because I think unicorns are celestials. I'm going to go with arcana, if you don't mind. I don't mind. Rolling an 11, so 18 in total. An 18. And you have some base knowledge of, of unicorns. Anything you've kind of seen in, in film or ten, television kind of carries over to unicorns. You know they're magical. You know they, they're celestial, that they... They're kind of like sacred creatures. They show up in in kind of nature esque areas, almost supernaturally so. Sometimes having effects over the areas around them, but they usually don't swim, and they usually don't swim deep into lakes. So something's off there. Would it be safe to assume that I'm my character with that role and the knowledge you've given me comes to a and the wink together would come to a conclusion that the hypothesis would be that this is potentially a unicorn's haven, if one were to exist. Hmm. You could come to that conclusion. I you will come to it. I will it then... certainly, it certainly is a nice place. Like a unicorn would probably like this place. I will then turn to my rabbit companion and say, if you believe in things of the magic nature like a unicorn, this would be its home. I suspect that it has been invaded by some darkness or some force, which is causing the dreamlike state that our friend Reggie has discovered to fall apart into nightmares, which I'm very familiar with. Felicia? Oh, oh, 
I once read this book about this kid that tossed a coin into this lake and then when he jumped in, he got transported to a whole nother world where he pulled a sword out of a stone. It was crazy. And then I immediately pull out the silver coin and then I pop it in the lake and then I jump in like cannonball style and then uh, send my uh, Eldridge cannon and my robot in with me as we all jump together like. So before you jump in, you toss the coin in, and our goblin friend is still in the water. Uh oh. You hear a uh, loser lets out a yelp uh, and is pulled into this lake when when you oh. flick the coin onto there. You hear a loser say, I don't know, loser, if you wouldn't yelp, that's you can push back no, on that. Yelping's fine. It'll be like, oh, yep. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like yeah. Was into the water? Uh, yes, it's pulled down. And when you flip that coin in there, there's like a ripple after it, and then the whole lake gets very still. Do you still want to jump? Um, <laughs> <laughs> loser. The horse says, Did she just call him a loser? <laughs> Guys, we. We got a whole loser, and I and I grab my Eldritch cannon, and I'm jumping in, baby. We go in to help him. All right, you you jump in, and you see the silver surface of this uh, lake kind of splash up and envelop you, and and kind of leaves this sound uh, as it settles again, leaving just Eke and Moonstone on the other side of Moon Glimmer Lake. <sighs> they do not come up for air. This is not good, Moonstone. Tis well, um, shall we? Moonstone sort of looks around and are there are there other creatures in this forest that she can see? There's a horse. <laughs> <laughs> are there other creatures that live in this forest? <laughs> uh, you hear frogs. You certainly hear frogs. Nothing yeah, I mean, you might see like a grasshopper, you know, kind of. Right. Buzz. That's more like a bee, I guess. Grasshoppers don't <laughs> usually buzz. But who can make a grasshopper sound? Um, anyway, a grasshopper kind of uh, flitters up or whatever the adjective there is. You see uh, a, a, like an owl uh, nestled in a tree, uh, hooting away uh, and spinning its head as, as howls do based on nature shows I've seen. <laughs> I think she's just going to... Um shout out to the forest randomly uh in sylvan uh hello is anybody here uh the owl ooh, ooh, ooh. back at you while she does that i'm going to cast the spell the cantrip message and try and send a message to fix it felicia give me one moment buffering for the dm casting <laughs> uh you cast this and you kind of hear it like like you get like the magical equivalent of a dial tone like it, no one answers so i would know that either she is too far away or no longer in this plane that is a logical conclusion okay so while well, i'm going to spend all of my <laughs> all of my spell slots before we even get into any encounter um I believe she is either dead or they are both dead. Double death killing, murder. Double death, murder, death killing, which case the best really ending. Inspired and well, died precisely. Good night, everyone. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming out, everyone. Bye. No. We go or, home. <laughs> or we'll need to go in because they have transferred to another plane of existence. Either way, our friends are in danger. We should not wait any longer. All right, then. And uh, Moonstone's got her coin out just in case she needs it again, and she's going to dive in, hop right into the lake. As you dive My in, God. you hear somewhere in the distance a satyr saying, no, wait, don't! And you... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so when, when she dives in, I want to try something real quick. Yeah. I'm going to leave my coin on the shore and just submerge myself and swim out. Anything? Uh, is you... As you kind of step in, 
Everybody else has died. Nobody else has gone in gradually. Either Most everybody has had their whole body in this thing at one moment. Right. Um, as you kind of step in, you get this really kind of cold sensation around your feet, but you feel like your feet aren't touching. They don't, it doesn't feel like they're in water. It feels like your feet are almost uh, touching like grass, like dry grass. Uh, you feel like the, the knot of a root uh, underneath your foot as you're kind of stepping into the water. But the coin's on the shore, so there's nothing sucking me down. There's nothing sucking you down, no. Gravity, you can feel gravity pulling you. Very, really? Okay, so. All right. On the other side, this looks really weird. And we'll describe that in a moment. I will submerge myself and swim out a little bit, but I'll leave the coin on the shore to see if that's part of the portal. Just so as that. soon as you get to a depth where you are, where you would be fully submerged if your feet touch the ground, you find yourself on the other end of this portal. And I think this is a really great time for a, for a 10 minute break. All right. That sound good, oh Jason? Good. I I guess. I mean, we can, I suppose, if we want. Yeah. No, that's Let's fine. Do it. All yeah, right, cool. it's halfway. We're at halfway. All right, cool, cool. All right. Well then thanks for everybody for being here and we're gonna take a break and be back in about ten ish minutes.
Uh, yeah, will you give me a cue whenever we're live again? I'll probably recap a little bit of what we did before, too. Yeah. Maybe. This... Why is it... Oh, my... Jason, I've got that same piece of art. I'll turn... Hold up. Oh, the, the, the race with Crisania? Yeah. The exact same piece of art. Nice. Is yours signed by uh, Larry I feel like oh I should have said something over the trailer then. That would have been really awesome. Come to Wild Beyond the Witchlight Platinum Edition. Yeah, something <laughs> yeah. Um, Well, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to our viewers and to our players. Um, if you just caught the end of that video, that's a, that's a little uh, video made from our friends over at D4, um, uh, the Rock Punch ATL Twitch channel. You can check them out. They do a show every Sunday. Dustin and Devin are wonderful code DMs and they also are really cool and, and made that video um, for one of our boxes that box is uh, available for sale on our store um, but right now we are we're, we're in Fizzbands land so we are talking uh, we're talking dragons and draconic things and uh, we have uh, been running uh, uh, you are about an hour and a half into a one-shot uh, session inspired from some of the content in our upcoming Fizzbands box uh, and our our adventurers have been investigating the missing muse for the um, playwright Reginald Wells, uh, who uh, goes up to Moon Glimmer Lake uh, once a month to get play ideas with Reginald's creditors and producers hot on his heels. Uh, he has asked the party to go investigate the lake and find out what happened to his muse. Um, so our four uh, heroes, uh, Eke, Loser, Fixit Felicia, and Moonstone, um, have gone to Moon Glimmer Lake and have just stepped into the lake where they've heard this sound that sounds like a, a whinnying, uh, braying, horse noising unicorn uh, inside of the, uh, of the, of the lake um, uh, where, uh, yeah, yeah, you all, uh, we had a cannonball. We had uh, uh, our, our friend Loser was swimming when a, when a silver coin was thrown in and was suddenly yelped onto wherever the other side is. And slowly we all made our way in. Um, oh, if our, if our things are swapped, you should be able to just drag the uh, Mic on. the uh, pictures now. And set yeah, I, I, I took care of it, but it's just, oh. just random and strange. But we're good No now. worries. No <laughs> worries. Um, so you all have Mic just off. stepped in. So... So uh, we'll recap a little bit back and we'll show what happened on the other side. So when this coin was uh, flung into the lake, uh, Loser was swimming with just his head sticking out and suddenly was yelped, uh, Loser, you feel like you fell. And as you fell, you fell down a little bit and then onto your stomach. You fell uh, face forward into this kind of um, patch of uh, what looks like, uh, kind of like, like lilies, uh, except these lilies are kind of these this iridescent shade. Like they look like uh, like a grease bubble almost. That when you kind of look at the this kind of black sheen, it's shifting this rainbow uh, along them. Uh, in a, addition to that, you see kind of before you um, this mouth of this like root of a big tree that you're on. It's got moss growing on it. A different kind of beautiful huge, bigger-than-life uh, uh, glowing mushrooms and flowers and moss 
um, kind of branching. And then from this root are branching these other kind of trees. Um, it's a little dark, feels uh, about tw like twilight right now. Um, and you can see these kind of little greenish glittery motes dusting about in the air. Um, as soon as you kind of go through this portal, you hear that, that whinnying noise kind of morphs into something different. It almost sounds like a pained roar whenever it's translated through this kind of portal you fell through. As you kind of, you get up, you, you get your bearings. Uh, what do you do? You got like maybe a, a few seconds before Felicia uh, comes cannonballing in. Well, the first thing I want to do uh, was to pick one of those flowers and like kind of put it behind my ear. And then the second I hear that roar, I'd like to snap to it. Is there any way I could like figure out what creature this is through the roar with my ranger abilities? Uh, yes. What's your favorite enemy by chance? It is a fae. Okay, interesting. Yeah, why don't, um, let me see. Why don't you give me, why don't you give me a nature check? I think sounds like a good one. <laughs> I rolled a two. I have a two uh, total. So a two I know total. exactly what this is. You know it exactly what it is. It's definitely an astral dreadnought uh, somewhere off in the distance, a horrific <laughs> far realm creature somewhere ahead. Uh, you're, you're, you're starting to focus. You feel like you're getting your, your bearings and then suddenly a, uh, a, a folded up cannonball of a person comes barreling through the other side. Uh, you see kind of like this this you have this big tree kind of coming out of the root uh, and there's this big knot in the tree that kind of has that same silver sheen uh to it as the surface of the water did uh and uh fix it felicia um like a missile comes through and barrels straight into where you're standing uh on this mossy tree branch uh your flower does hold still though in your ear uh, and the two of you collide with one another. Fantastic. Loser, are you okay? I, I was. And I, I was like, I hold my ribs and try to catch my breath. I was. I was <laughs> you, so won't, you won't believe it. I was right. I was telling everyone about this book about this kid that threw a coin into the water. I thought I was in he heaven. It. What? I thought I was in heaven for a second. <laughs> what? Oh, you're what homunculus. You your yeah, homunculus bounces, then a big duck cannon comes through afterwards. <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> the team's here. Let's do it. Well, we fight you. Um, There's some sort of evil creature over there. What was it called? Astro Dreadnoughts? <laughs> Astro, yeah. You, you say you don't know what it is. You throw out like an offhand monster reference. Oh, ask. <laughs> I've never heard of that before, and I've read a lot of books. It's greatly evil. We must go take care of you. Um, do um, like a graceful dagger, uh, Moonstum comes diving through, and as she dives through, she still holds that kind of long posture and just kind of slides onto this soft moss, uh, uh, like an arrow with your hands in front of you. You realize where you thought you were jumping down, you're now sliding on the ground. Mm -hmm. She's just, just gonna land like this, just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look super cool for a moment. And then you all see, uh, Eke, do you wear shoes? No. So you see this kind of white furry paw, like, like hesitantly stepping at this weird like corner angle and it like steps on this mushroom this mushroom begins to bend uh you see like the toes wiggling getting some moss between them <laughs> then like a little bit more of the legs like come through and like feel around for a moment the tree is almost bowing to like make it more comfortable for like the the walking to happen and slowly like it's just the neck down of of Eke, like moving his arms around as if he's in water um, before he kind of loops out the other bubble, the rest of the tree snaps back into place and just kind of lets the rest of him out. And he's standing on the moss before y'all. Here we go again. 
Is everyone okay? Yep, we're all accounted for. I've been better. I think she <laughs> broke her rib. But, uh, I'm good. I'd like to uh, pick a couple more flowers. And while Moonstone's still in her, like, look how cool I am pose, I'd like to put one in her hair. <laughs> you, you, you put one of the flowers in Moonstone's hair, it matches yeah. yours. <laughs> I'm going to do something that might be uh, foolish, but it's what he would do. He's, uh, so he has this ability, which essentially in this world would just be like detect magic. It's reading the veil, which he, the veil is a, is a, a chronomantic shell where he comes from, what's like a dip into time. And so he, he thinks that he's stuck in this nightmare realm in the veil again. So he's having a bit of a PTSD moment. So he immediately will turn his switching, he switches viewership to uh, detect magic and trying to detect everything around him and befall the consequences perhaps. So detect magic. Yeah, you, so you, you, you kind of start detecting. It's so weird. You get like this, the, the tree itself just like, radiates this overwhelming like hummingly loud uh conjuration magic around that silvery veil like it, it's like standing next to like a and the magical equivalent of like an industrial machine the magic required to form a fey crossing is like so loud to your to your aura you also see these little bits of enchantment magic like radiating from the flowers and the uh the mushrooms uh and a little bit of conjuration around the flowers that are changing colors and the ones uh in moonstone and loser's hair uh, uh and um but that's about 30 feet so you, th that's kind of the most of this route um you also notice that there's uh these little kind of motes of light seem to be uh like they're not magical. They almost seem kind of like lightning bugs. They're like, they're alive, not like a spell, like a dancing light spell or anything. Mm. But I would, this is definitely different from what I'm used to. So this is some other dimensional thing. Yeah, it might have a weird kind of, if like arcane magic is like following rules and messes with like the weave or of, of the, in the Forgotten Realms and like, this is like wild. Like it's hmm. popping up and disappearing and it doesn't follow the rules all the time. There's something off about does, it. Does um, Moonstone get a sense that it was a Fey Wild, like a Fey Crossing? Yeah, I think I, I think if you know what a Fey Crossing is or you've been one, through one before, this feels familiar. Uh, maybe there's, maybe the last sensation that you felt as you left the last one, the last thing you ate on the other side of a fade crossing rings strong on your tongue, the sense that you remember uh, hitting the, like the hippocampus, it's just, you're overwhelmed with these memories yeah. that are heightened in the fade. She wild. does the, the thumper uh, foot thing again. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, do, do, and, do, just, do, do, do. Uh, and just says, I think we've, we've gone over a fade crossing. A fade crossing. Well, I heard a loud roaring coming from that way. I look. Uh, perhaps we should investigate. <laughs> just, I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. I feel like this is heaven. You kind of like point that way, and where you heard roaring before, you almost hear like a jazz riff, like, like, like going off in that direction. I'll take a look down. Is What can we see? Um, you see a very long tree root extending into darkness. Oh. Like you are on like a tree root that is as wide as a, a road, basically. Well, um, and, and it branches off in different areas. Um, if you would look over the edge, you would see some other tree branches below, and then it plunges into darkness. Well, while I have Detect Magic on for the next 10 minutes, I will guess I'll just begin to walk forward, observing, looking for shifts. In, in conjuration and enchantment to something perhaps dangerous like vocation or necromancy or anything. Yeah, you continue to kind of pulse that as you do. You, you notice it's getting less loud than it was because you're away from the crossing. I see. Um, what about our ranger? Uh, it's, I'm conflicted because I feel like I'm supposed to be at peace here. Um, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on any actions right now. I'm just going to kind of watch the group and just keep an, uh, keep kind of like a sense of alertness. 
Yeah. Why, why don't you, you're the, you're like the group tracker, like, and you don't have to do this, but since this is kind of your element away from civilization, it'd probably be appropriate to give a survival check here. Okay. That's, that's if you want to be like looking for clues along the way. Sure. Let's go with uh, do, 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 23 on my survival. Yeah. So you see Eke like, do, I don't, do you say it's your eyes that, that change when you're casting basically? Yeah, they're like cogs of time, kind of like spin and turns. It's very, yeah. very Doctor Strange, but in the eyes and in the hands. Yeah, you see like these different cogs moving around, these very time elements, like this magical thing. And then you like get down next to the ground. You put your hands out with the moss and you kind of pull your hand up and smell it a little bit. And there's all this like glitter on it, like this periwinkle glitter. Uh, and you notice it kind of forms a, a patch, like similar to like what you'd see on a on a blood stain. And as soon as you do that, you, when you kind of inhale it, it's like your senses open up to it. And you see like a trail of this in different ways. You see it coating a certain branch off of this, this root. Like it rings out to you, like, you know, like a video game where you turn on your detective vision and you see the glowing bits following a certain way. Um, but they're not magical per se it's just your natural ability to find things let's go explore that let's go let's go check that out that glowing area <clears throat> yeah you you kind of say that you're like it's obvious right and nobody else knows what you're um, talking about right there it's like can you want to go it's so pretty um what are no you looking one... at Sees anything. You see, you don't see the. There's a whole bunch of branches. <laughs> Follow me, and I go over to it. Yeah, you like go over. You you look at the ground. You see a little like like a little bit more of of this kind of bluish glitter patch. Maybe if they look really closely, they start to see it. They're like, ah, I, I guess I could see there's more glitter in this place than everywhere else. That there's glitter in the Feywild. <laughs> Um, yeah. Moonstone's pointing in an opposite direction. I'm just yeah. scooping them up. <laughs> I want to scoop up all this stuff and just put it in my pockets. And like, this is great. This is this is lovely. This is. I'll put it in my ditch. I'll decorate it. It'll be fantastic. Yeah, you you pick up some of it. You pocket it, uh, and you begin to kind of uh, move towards um, this. You, you see this kind of almost like glow in the dark structure in the distance. Um, it looks like a kind of multi-tiered castle, almost like, a, or not a castle, a cottage of sorts. Um, it's a bit skinnier than it is wide. It still kind of has a bunch of little A-frames to it. Um, and it has these weird like little clouds around it. And as you kind of get closer, the rest of you still hear this almost like this jazz, this like shifting music, this like kind of whatever your mind is drawn to. Like if you like jazz music, you hear jazz music. If maybe um, Felicia is hearing that book that she's reread a few times, mm -hmm. Familiar Plots. It's an audio feel, book. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like the best mystery audiobook you've ever seen. Um, what what might Moonstone hear? Something that's it's it's like your 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 character's muse is is like having a chance to Riff, what, what would Moonstone see? Oh my gosh, uh, probably, uh, you, you, you said it's, it's auditory, right? Yeah, it's auditory, sorry, I said I, I think I think it would be like clinkling, uh, sort of what what we would imagine Feywild, like clinkly chime, wind chime type of thing going on. But I think yeah. she's also gonna um, try to stopper her ears just to see if it makes a difference. Like with her, with her long rabbit ears, she's gonna Stick them in there and just see if. She yeah, you plug off. your ear, but your foot. Dum, 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 yeah. dum, 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 <laughs> it's still going to the kind of the beat of yeah. the of the chimes. If chimes have a beat, <laughs> in the Feywild does, they do. Yeah, do, when she covers her ears, does she still sort of hear it? Yeah, it's kind of like in your head. Um, what about what about loser? What would if if loser was hearing this kind of muse like? You could probably choose as the tracker to kind of select it out, but there's still something going off in your mind. Well, I, I like uh, the idea that it sounds like birds chirping to me, all singing in almost like a chorus. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe a little bit like rainfall hitting the leaves. That's what it all sounds like to me if we're going to like what our fantasy is. Yeah. And what about I don't, okay. I don't drown it out. You don't drown it out. Yeah, you're moving towards, and you know that that's the way, like you can tell as your tracker mind that you're headed towards that sound. Um, and what about Eke? What, do you, what is Eke here? Uh, Eke has a travel companion that he spends a lot of his time with, uh, a dwarf named Foley Embeard, who has hmm. a big leather-bound book that he reads his memoirs from. And it's usually some dwarven ranting about some nonsense that's almost almost um, as homely as Felicia speaking. It's just like just rambling, but he loves the, the constant noise. So between Foley and Felicia, he's got the, some sort of story going on in his head. And if he knows that, if he believes that it's not someone speaking to him, then he won't react like, huh? Because he'll, otherwise he'll start to react. So if, if he knows this is in his brain that's going off, then he'll find it more interesting than anything else. Yeah. So you all kind of maybe have an array of different faces, like in response to this. You have Moonstone covering her ears. You have probably Felicia, like really interested in an audio book. Oh, uh, don't you, go in there. No. <laughs> no, like, yeah, respond. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, Felicia is saying things out loud to, to in response to a plot that none of y'all can hear. Um, and, you, and it's ringing out from this cottage. Um, so I sent y'all an image separately. It's just one from the Dungeon Master's Guide, but maybe that's kind of what this looks like. Um, so you see this kind of this cottage rising. It's got at least three floors to it, but these, these little tufts of clouds almost around it, the kind of cotton candy texture to them. They don't seem to sift or move. They almost look like, like a pillow that you could reach out and touch. Uh, and you're kind of on this sloping route that leads to it. Um, and whatever that sound is, it is at its most uh, loud when you're on this cusp. Um, and as you kind of get within range of, of, you start to see this cottage, you can make out different aspects of it. Um, it you hear like this, tr someone asking for help throughout it. Um, in the audiobook, it might just sound like the narrator saying, interrupting to say something like, and you gotta have, you gotta help me out. They've got me in here. Um, whereas the chimes, maybe the chimes would ring like, help me. And the birds would, I don't know, signal that in a similar way, but with birds. Very <laughs> distress. But was it Professor Jenkins in the dining room with the candlestick? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, it's that's what it's gonna be. Uh, Munto's just gonna stop for a second and, and uh, sort of straighten out and look around and say, did you hear that? As you kind of say that, you say like, did you hear that? All of the noise dampens for you all. Uh, and it's just as quiet as when you first kind of stepped in. I, I nod in agreement to Moonstone. Hear what? You can hear Foley too. Uh, ah, for pun there, I made a pun, sorry. You can hear Foley too. Foley, oh yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's like a that's like a movie pun. Deep, yeah. That yeah. was, a movie pun. <laughs> it was yeah. deep. Yeah. Foley. We have a tradition <laughs> on our channel. We have a tradition on our channel where we, we do puns a lot. So I apologize if it that's gets a good a pun. pun all of a sudden. <laughs> do you um, hear the dwarf as well? No, I heard I heard chimes, but um, it was all over the bottom of my head. I heard the best book you ever would hear. But it cut out right before they revealed who killed the mistress. <laughs> Did you happen to hear a character ask for help? Yes, the narrator chimed in and asked for help and said, hey, you got to help me out here. But I really need to know if it was Professor Jenkins in the dining room with the candlestick. It was. I thought it was Gambit, Professor Gambit. No, there was no Professor Gambit in he this He had book. playing cards. Uh, um, well, I think I think someone's in danger or needs help, and I think we should go. Do you believe that it's coming from this building ahead? 
think yeah. whoever 100%. is asking for help is uh, doesn't want its captor to know we're onto it. Jeez. Perhaps a little bit of uh, espionage, my friend. Um, okay. Well, I mean, like, mm, espionage isn't really my thing because I'm just about to, you know, I'm all about fixing things, you know? Um, Moonstone's but, already yeah. ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Moonstone's, Moonstone's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> trying to stealth ahead. What, yeah, and what do the rest of y'all want to do? Like, this is your chance. You have a second to, like, kind of take a beat and decide how you want to go forward here. You can do it stealthily. You can come up with a plan. How You know, Moonstone, sounds like Moonstone wants to go stealthy and 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 Eke wants to see some espionage. What about uh, what about Felicia and Loser? Um, that name, I, <laughs> that name makes me feel bad every time I call on your character. So it's one of one of the chatters in our group is is named Loser, and I was like, man, every time I say it, I feel so bad. I was like, I want to use it. I want to use it for this like. <laughs> it's a good here. name. Yeah. Hmm. I will ride my cannon with my little robot um, oh. into behind Eke. I'm assuming because I can't really do the whole sneaky thing. I'm going to try to keep up with Moonstone uh, while being stealthy. Okay, so we got kind of like two teams then. We have like the, the team that moves in after, and we have the, the scouts. So right. why don't my two scouts make stealth checks for me? Oof. An eight. An eight. Well, it, it's a good thing we're on this team, because I also got an eight. <laughs> Wonderful. So Wonderful. Eight, eight, or 16. 16. We got 16. Yeah, you're 16. Yeah, there's some math in that. Uh yeah, so you all you all feel pretty sneaky. Um you you kind of as you're sneaking, you kind of step on this one mushroom that makes the sound that like a balloon lets out when you are letting out the air and you like s- stretch the end. And as you kind of let your foot off of it, it like makes that sound louder for a moment. Oh, um, no. So maybe you move away from that uh, that area, and you you kind of come up on this uh, on this cottage, um, and you see that the the windows have kind of these like emerald panes. And when you when you get to the cottage, um, you notice that the cottage is a lot smaller than you thought. It's actually closer up than it looked like before. That kind of when you close in on it, your chest is higher up than the window. At this point, and the window is only about a foot tall. Uh-huh. You figuratively and literally have your heads in the clouds uh, as you step forward to it. This cloud is like getting <laughs> up in your face. Uh, I'd like to try to peer in the window. Yeah, you kind of you lean down. Uh, why don't you make a perception check? Sure. Oh, lovely. That is a 18. I'm gonna get new dice, I can't see. 18. And 18. Uh, so you you kind of peer through um, and you feel like you're looking into a kitchen. Um, you, you're on the right side of the building. You look into this kitchen. Uh, you see what looks like kind of like green and white tiles on the floor. There's a, a cauldron. Uh, and it's got kind of this purple smoke coming out of it. You can almost make out this s- smell or sound bubbling. Like you feel like it must be bubbling, but you're not sure. That's what you see in that window. Otherwise, the, the room looks empty. There's a kind of like uh, um, table that has like claw uh, feet to it um, that's kind of in the corner and uh, three chairs. Uh, I let... <clears throat> I let Moonstone know what I see. And would you do you want to go in? It looks a bit abandoned for now. Uh do we have another another window that we can look into? Yeah, yeah, there's another window. There um <clears throat> there's two windows, one on each side of this main doorway. Um why don't you make a perception check for me? All right. And then the reason why is not that you can't see into these windows. It's kind of like it's a little bit murky. It's like almost like looking through an emerald. 22. 
22. Yeah, you have no problem looking through emeralds. Um, you look through kind of this, uh, this leftmost room, um, and it looks like there's some different plants kind of growing in here. There's like a very thorny plant kind of right up against the window that when you get close to it, it like presses itself up against the window and kinds to try to like bind itself together and like make out the shape of, of you peering in. Um, when you kind of look in there and you see this one also is empty. There's like a worn uh, water can sitting uh, on an area um, like on a little like side table, basically. You see some bags of what looks like seed and soil and things like that. Uh, they're, they're a little bit more grandiose. Uh, there's something off of that. It's very Feywildy. Instead of it being a straight water can, it's almost like way taller than it needs to be. Um, it almost looks like it has a face to it. Uh, and when you're really still, it almost seems like it's bouncing back. Battery low. I think she's going to uh, make like a little heart shape with her bunny ears to see okay. if the, the plants make the, the plants heart make shape. the heart shape. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, and then she's going to motion for uh, loser to come over. Hey, loser, get over here! Hey, loser. <laughs> um, she does the little bunny ears things. I'm just going to be squinting ear to ear, just like oh, it's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you come up, you see that, yeah, you see the heart in there, and you, you see everything that that uh, she just dis that well, I described to her. <clears throat> um, I think maybe plants are more your territory. Charging battery. Well, um, okay, uh, I'd like to identify this plant and see if it is harmful. Honestly, yeah, make a nature check. Oh, nice. Oh, no, it's not nice. Uh, I suck at that stat. Uh, 13. A 13? Um, so I'll, I'll say a 13 <clears throat> combined with this kind of interaction that Moonston has had. You know, this, this plant is like harmful to wade through. It's got thorns on it and barbs. Um, it's, it's got a kind of like a really deep green to it, but it has these very like <clears throat> little ch like cherries that are very bright red branching off of it. Um, but it seems to mimic like your movements and like trace outlines. And as you're kind of looking in there, you see a lock on the inside of this uh, window, kind of above these plants. Oh, how close does the plant get to the window? Is it like right up on it? It's when like it's right on the windowsill, yeah. Can I just put my hand and my finger where the lock is on the window and see if it starts like copying me? Yeah, as you kind of raise your hand up, one of the plants like <clears throat> things begins to kind of mimic that. And you see it kind of bump into the lock. You see the lock jimmy back and forth. Oh, I have an idea. Can I see if I, 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 I would like to take my <clears throat> hand like it's open and then like I'm grabbing the lock and pulling it. Yeah, the plant like it. makes like a wrapping uh, in response and it you hear something flick and dangle for a moment. Uh, and then you notice that the, the window ever so slightly kind of opens a bit. I want to give Moonshine a little, or sorry, Moonstone a little nudge. It's like, ah, just, did you see it? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> this is great. Don't tell Felicia. <laughs> um, they have seen all of this. Uh, with your eight, they are standing patiently uh, behind watching you all tiptoe over to the window, look in, get excited, tell the other one to come up, see you making the hearts and stuff. But they see all of this happening. They're doing it again, Felicia. You know, this reminds me of a book about a troll stuck in Baldur's Gate. He had a very green thumb. And it's really weird because I didn't know that, well, my friend Loser had the green thumb for such things. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, the window is open. Um, you can. Yeah, sorry, Moonstone. What you were saying? Moonstone is probably going to like put a, a foot in and then sort of like put a paw up to high five the plant. You put a foot in. You see, kind of one of the roots of one of the plants, like lower down to the ground in that direction. Uh, and then you put up your hand, and the plant kind of gives you a little high five. It's a little prickly because of the thorns, but it doesn't do any damage. <laughs> I think she'll carefully uh, enter through the window then. Yeah, so you move through this window uh, and you hear like a laughter coming from the east. 
uh, when you get in. What, what about the rest of you all? Do, you, Do we all hear the laughter or just Moonstone? When the windows open, you would hear it. Does it sound like the same voice that we heard earlier? Well, no, never mind, because mine was distressed birds. I wouldn't have heard the actual vocals. Never mind. No, but you do hear uh, kind of like a, a that similar pained kind of roaring sound that you first heard. Okay, okay. Well, then I'll, I'll step through as well, and I'd like to not touch the thorny plant that's copying my movement. You try not to touch the plant. You maybe give it like one of these movements and the plant kind of gives you one back. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> it's like two awkward people just going. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, you're trying to move through like the space. same space. Yeah. Um, okay. What are, what are we doing here as I'm watching them clearly play a game called Twister um, <laughs> across the floor here? I suspect that we are going to save whatever creature is asking for our help. So we must help our friends. Um, and I gesture for, for you to go into the uh, windowsill. But perhaps we should save story time for after we rescue whatever it is we are trying to rescue. I mean, I'll try my best, but I mean... You know, if I think of something, it's coming out real hard. <laughs> Honestly, like, why do we even have to go through this door? Why can't we go through the other window? Like, we don't know what those plants will do, right? It obviously seems like the best option is if we go through the other window. I can just break it with my cannon, and then we can go through that way. It'll be perfect. We, we might want to be quiet. We can be quiet. Are you sure? <laughs> I mean, I can be quiet. Okay, you see, you see the fox just kind of tweak back a bit. I believe you. Should we go through another way then? I think that will be best. You're suggesting we split the party. I mean, I'm suggesting that we go through the other window. I don't know what splitting anything has to do in, with it. Okay. Well, let's go. Lead the way. I take my cannon and I aim it <laughs> at the other window. <laughs> I All right. Cast invisibility on myself. <laughs> okay, wonderful. You take your cannon and you aim it at the uh, kitchen window. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Do you fire the cannon? I oh, fire man. the cannon because Eke said I got his approval. Which he shouldn't have given me. So there we go, baby. This is not my what, fault. What does it look like when you fire the cannon? Uh, what do I have it set on? I think I have it set on fire. So, so. <laughs> oh, thank God you didn't shoot at the plant. That's my new friend. Yeah, right. Um, yes, it, it's a flamethrower cannon. So it's probably going to shoot and hit the wall and just start melting the glass. All right, yeah, yeah. So this duck opens its mouth and it <sighs> quacks and like you see the this kind of like layer melt. It begins to smell like burned sugar uh, when that happens. Um, like smells like somebody left that on too long, like rock candy is bubbling at the bottom of a pot uh, as it kind of settles and then almost immediately begins to cool into this mostly hard, sticky, kind of green gunk on the bottom of the windowsill. Um, the room lights up for a moment with, with this color of your flame, uh, and you hear somebody uh, speak. Uh, what languages do you speak? Um, I speak Celestial, Draconic, Elvish, Gnomish, Infernal, because I once sold my soul for knowledge. You have a lot of languages there, but unfortunately, you don't have the one language that is the one they are speaking. Oh, wait. I take that back. Uh, you hear someone say, what? What just happened in the kitchen? Are we burning something again? I smell burning sugar. Uh, and you hear kind of like a... Oh, I think you're so. right, Eke. And I go jump into the... <laughs> 
Jump in the what? I jump in the plant room with the cannon. <laughs> oh, you jump back in the other room? Yes. Uh, you walk over and you run and you jump through the plant room. When you jump through the plant room, one of the plants leaps off of the window shell and you hear a pottery sound as the plant breaks on the ground, trying to mimic your jump through that window. No sudden movements. I'm going to quickly run to the window. You quickly run to the window. Invoke the powers of chronomancy, touch the windowsill, and for the second of three, as proficiency bonus, use the use the uh, the chronomancy manipulation lesser reversal and reverse the window back to normal. While you watch it visibility. kind of begin to build itself back up, and then I will immediately just watch. So as you all jump through this window. Remember, this window is not very big. When you jump through the window, you come into a full-size room, almost the width of this small like building that you saw as you're getting close to. Something off about it's like Willy Wonka getting walking down that hallway where he opens the tiny door. Um, Eke, you put your face to the uh, to the glass, and you see this uh, kind of blue-skinned uh, woman walking through. She's got these little, like, green, uh, uh, like, liver spots running up her arms. Her hair is just constantly matted, uh, and she has what looks to be, like, like, wet seaweed hanging off of her head in place of hair. Um, everywhere she goes, she kind of leaves this puddle behind her, and she walks in and <laughs> is sniffing about she her face is kind of elongated and looks like the front of like a large mouth bass uh, she has these really really kind of wide mouth and as she walks it's talks it's almost like like larger like watching a puppet flap like um uh, you can hear the muffled sound of her talking about something burning she runs over the cauldron uh and uh, begins to uh, examine it uh, critically fails and tastes the cauldron and shrugs and you hear her yell something back and you hear another voice responding. Elsewhere, those of you that are inside the house, you hear her saying, it looks fine to me. Uh, and you hear somebody say, uh, well, get back in here, we're not done yet. Uh, and then you hear that roaring sound again uh, in response. So I see the the hag is still sorry, not the hag. I'm assuming, metagame. Oh, she's definitely a hag. Yeah. This creature. Oh, so would I recognize it as a hag? If you know anything about sea hags, you would recognize this. Not a sea, sea hag, hag, but Eka has fought many nightmare hags in his time. So there's a cauldron. The window is made of sugar. Uh, the voice. It's, it's <laughs> the the voice. It's all very. It's like straight out of a fairy tale book. Like this would be the thing that like you would be warned about as a child in the forgotten oh, yeah. realms of like, if you see these things all together, you should run away children. Like he's going to, he's going to, this Fox, like teeth bearing Seinfeld moment, like human, he's gonna be like, Hey, like he's <laughs> eats these things. He's fights them all the time. And then immediately realizes that his companions are in the, in the house and I'll pivot away to the next windowsill and reach over and go. Shh. As you kind of hear that, you all hear the sounds of creaking wood coming through. There are two entrances to this room. There's one towards the front of the house, and then there's one towards the back. Uh, you would hear someone uh, walking in from this kind of east door, uh, as if somebody's coming to investigate the pottery sound. May I use a reaction? Well, well, I'm I'm gonna go back to the rest of them real quick because you sure. you just did the the pulling back and have come this way and you're at the window shushing. So sure. this would kind of be happening at the same time. So we have Moonstone Loser and Felicia. Sorry about calling you loser again. Uh, are it's all in this room. Uh, You've watched this pot jump off and crash against the ground. Uh, the window is open. Eke is shushing in it, and you all can hear the sounds of footsteps uh, coming towards you. What do you do? hide you want to hide what about uh what moonstone i'm guessing it's probably similar with your high stealth yeah uh i think she 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 wants to take a moment to look out the other door just to peek out the other door to see what is out there on the other side 
So there's so, the, so the window is south. I yeah. wish I could project an image of a map. This would be helpful. Um, the window is south. Uh, to the to the east is where the footsteps are coming from, and then the other door is to the north. And you look like you can see a large uh, table with with things on it in the next room. There's a number okay. of chairs arranged around the table, but that one looks empty. Uh, I think, yeah, I think she's gonna, uh, duck out the door and hide on the other side. Okay, yeah, you move into that room. Um, why don't you and, uh, why don't you and, uh, Loser make stealth checks? And what about you, uh, Felicia? Um, it totally depends on if Moonstone shuts the door or not <laughs> as she slides through it. Um, I need to know that. Oh, is these are a, like, this is like an open floor plan, by the way. Like, oh, these okay. rooms are like moving into each other. It's like moving between a, like, like there's like a cutout of a door, but not necessarily anything that opens or closes. Oh, okay. Um, you said there's a big table here? Yes. Um, there's a big table. On the table, it looks like there's something folded standing up. It's got kind of like different panels. You can see there's little toys arranged on some sort of mat in the center and there are little bits of sugar crystals uh scattered across the top how big are the toys um they're about an inch or two tall ah uh, okay cool um, um one of them looks like a dragon there's a couple other ones that look like i'm little... going to hide under the table yeah make a stealth check and what did the what did the other two of y'all get on your stealth check 16. 16? Five. Five, wonderful. 18. 18. And me and my can, I'm sitting on my can and just like, Eke said to be quiet, Eke said to be quiet, be quiet, Felicia, be quiet. I think also, I think also before Moonstone like dives into the other room, she's gonna um, gesture to her plant friend that she thinks is a plant friend anyway, and just do this. The plant raises up uh, a, a thing and pushes it against the broken piece of pottery. <laughs> uh, Eke, you've just shushed as well. You're standing in this window that's open a little bit. Right, I should probably state that I'm invisible so they can only hear the shh. <laughs> so you're invisible, they only hear that? Yeah. Um, if I may blow a reaction, sure. I'd like to use one of my abilities uh, called suspend, which freezes a moment in time and allows for a minute worth of conversation. Reaction. Oh, okay. So all of a sudden, so as as Moonstone is kind of moving through very slowly, uh, Felicia's saying, "Eh, he told me to be quiet. And then Loser's just like, what? Because he doesn't really know where he's hiding yet. Things just kind of stop, Xavier style. Okay. And then we all can somehow talk. And that guy says, I know you can hear me, my friends. We don't have much time. I believe we are about to face some hags. What do you know about them? Um, can I do a history check? Because I probably read a book or something about them. You could do an arcana check. Do some actual time for it. Ooh. Oh, I'm good at that, too. Uh, that'll be a 22. Yeah, you know, you know about hags. You know that hags, like, especially sea hags, uh, you know, they kind of, they destroy things that they think are pretty and beautiful. Uh, you know that night hags are kind of these these effectors of dreams and uh, stealers of dreams and the maker of nightmares, uh, you know, uh, you kind of get other hags, but those are two of the most pertinent ones. For this I go on the ramble that you kind of did, but like, <laughs> I don't stop until someone stops me. Uh, you all, and you know, of course, that they love to work in groups of three. What are their weaknesses, yeah. Felicia? Did you ever hear a story or a book about their um, weaknesses? Um, d um, with that roll, did I? <laughs> uh, weaknesses? Not many. Uh, <laughs> but you know that some of them are not as affected by cold or fire. Cool, I relay that information. I think Moonstone <laughs> says that, well, if there's a group of three of them here, it's going to be, they're going to be real difficult to, to defeat. So I suggest we distract them best we can and go say whatever it is that's down wherever and get out of here 
How do we distract them? Well, Felicia's got plenty of surprises. We're on um, time. Agreed. Quickly. Make a plan. Ah, uh, I can't hold it any longer. Explosive. Make a plan. <laughs> Very dungeon master. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost out of time. Fucking make a plan already. Of all the books you've read, Felicia, you don't have one for this. <laughs> um, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I just in the, just I, I reality. just, I. So, so Felicia, uh, with your with your advantage here, I'm going to do something. There is something familiar about this, and there is something you are the most intelligent of the group as the artificer, unless there's a very strange uh, arrangement of spells here, and unfortunately. Uh, our loser will hear, will see this as well, but I'm going to send you the map for this okay. cottage. So you know the overlay of this. So if you go to that image, you will find the map that I'm working with. Um... We'll keep it between us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Don't look over here. This isn't for you. It's, it's, oh, I see it too. So only so, and it's a private message in our chat. So only loser and Felicia can see it. That is amazing. Where are we starting? Where are we? You are been. at the lower left, moving into the room above that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I've never been so happy to see something in private. <laughs> oh, you guys. Oh, you don't know how happy that just made me on so many levels right now. <laughs> you get the sense that the from looking through the kitchen earlier that the action was convening in the room above that one. Where the mystery was focused, if you will. Sorry. Room above the kitchen. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Ha! <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um. Well. And so, and so I'm actually going to do something here. I'm going to make this stealth check a group stealth check, actually. So I'm going to say since three of you succeeded, you all successfully hide. Yes. So, um, Jason, if you'll show the hag uh, image, out wanders uh, this kind of purplish skinned, horned, large, uh, uh, medium size, but, but large in terms of height, like a six foot five hag leers her head underneath this doorway. And she is holding in one of her hands a large candlestick. Uh, and she sniffs in the room and looks about, uh, and she walks over to this plant that's broken on the uh, on the floor. I'm gonna ask, what did Eke do, by the way, before this before this hag walked in? All right, so after the, uh, the suspend went off, um, he's still invisible, so I will uh, stay near the windowsill, um, but stay back a, about five feet and just look into the room and wait to see if the hag sees any of his friends and will react then. Yeah, she she kind of moves in, she looks about. Does she kind of like proverbially meet eye, proverbially meet eye contact with me? Even though I'm she invisible? First she like looks into the builder, billiards room. Uh, that's the room that our, our friends are in. Uh, she looks and counts the number of little baubles on the top of this table and then she goes up to the open window and she looks out gets yes yeah, she gets very close to you and she leans her head back in and she closes uh the the window and locks it again and then she pets one of her plants and as she does you see her cut her her hand on the thorn but she doesn't react to that as all uh, and then she puts this broken pot back on the windowsill and she says even better uh, and then she turns and she walks away uh, oh. back into the other room. Okay, I was going to say, may I have a moment to try and do something while she's doing that? Sure. Yeah, so um, she, when she's putting the thing back on the windowsill? When, when she, yeah, when she's sort of still within, I can still see her sort of eyes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
one of the abilities we discussed earlier is called temporal secrets, which allows okay. me to probe uh, surface thoughts of a mind and relive a moment back in time of the of the particular creature. Mm. Uh, there okay. is a chance that they will know that they are being probed, mm. and that is a saving throw. Um, if you give me a quick second, I'll find it. But basically, uh, so here it is here. As an action, I can focus my mind on one creature that I can see within 30 feet of me. I momentarily pass through the border ethereal, which in our world, the veil, which is time, to witness an event in time related to the creature's surface thoughts. Um, the target must make a wisdom saving throw uh, against my intelligence save, uh, or sort of against my spell save. Um, if it succeeds, the target knows that they are being probed, but not, might not understand the context of how. Once you have used this feature, I must finish a short or long rest before using it again. So one time use. So I'm going to go invisibly and just peer into history and see something from the hag's surface thoughts. Like if she says X. Yeah, what's, what's, the, what's the save? What's the DC? Uh, wisdom save. Okay. And what's the DC? 16. Okay. She fails. What happens now? So you subjectively now can give me something on her surface thought that I get to witness through her, her perspective as if watching a movie in the past. Yeah, so you, uh, first you see her sitting at the table in the other room. She's behind this, this uh, screen of sorts, rolling dice with the other two hags. She's narrating something there. She moves a couple of the little toys uh, in five foot increments. Then you see her get up, uh, the sound of something. She walks into this other room, this dining room, and laid across the dining room table is this creature. It has one singular horn protruding from its head, but instead of from its forehead, it's kind of moving back from the back of its head. It has these large wings with kind of this greenish uh, hue to them, and it has a little green glittery goatee, very majestic creature. Uh, and it is tied to the table, uh, and she is casting some sort of spell over it, trying to pull something out of, of the creature's uh, mind. And I think we have a picture of this creature. It's our other image that Jason can show. It is a dragon. It's a very special type of, net, uh, of dragon, which shares oh, a name yeah. with wow. one of our players, our characters. It is indeed the same kind of hue as a moonstone would be. Um, and then you see uh, this creature roaring out for help. Uh, and then you see her put it to sleep for a moment with some sort of magical dust and then roars silent again. And then she hears something. <laughs> you see a sea hag leave this area, go into the kitchen, and then she grabs a candlestick and walks into the other. And then, and then you, you're back. Uh, that moment has ended. Okay, we'll wait quietly for it to leave. All right, she moves back. You see her walking. Uh, she sets this candlestick on top of the, the table uh, in that room and uh, moves back towards some other area of the house. Uh, you hear, uh, th those of you inside, you hear this uh, hag say, I'm getting a little hungry. Is it ready yet? Uh, and you hear a couple of them answering, saying nondescript things about the timing of food that aren't important for them. What do you all do? Sorry, we're muted. I would like to make my way out of the room and then take a right down the hallway. Can, Can you tell me in cardinal directions? Um. North, south, north, south. I'm going to go east. Okay, you're going to go east. Yeah, you come into this kind of open area. You think maybe some people danced here at, at one point. There are these stairways leading up to different areas of the cottage. You can hear the, uh, you know that the roars were coming from the room immediately on the other side of there. Yep. I would, uh, I'm going to ignore the upstairs and I'd like to keep making my way towards that room. Yeah, so you kind of on his heels. Moonstone is on his heels. What about Felicia? Um, can I see what was on the table? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You you want to look up? You pick up one of the toys or something? Well, like I, yes, I kind of wanted to see if there was 
something going on with the table. I don't know. It seemed weird because she touched it to make sure everything was in place. So yeah. my OCD was like, oh, what's on that table? <laughs> yeah, um, you you look at it. It looks like a, a, a little, it looks like a game. Um, you lean in, you look, you see little, little toys. Um, you see a toy that looks like a dragon. Uh, it's kind of in an area. Looks like it's in a, in a kind of dining room of sorts. Um, you see that there's a couple of little metal pieces moved around the board in different areas um, and some cards. Uh, it looks like they were playing some sort of game here. I take the dragon and I pocket it. Okay, <laughs> you take the dragon and you pocket it. Uh, and yeah. the dragon looks like it's carved from some sort of precious kind of uh, like pale stone. Uh, it's cool. almost like marble, but not quite. And then where are the pieces at? Um, you so you picked up one uh, that was kind of on the right of this little this little map of sorts sitting on the table. Um, you notice that there are uh, kind of three very heroic looking pawns. Um, moving about. One of them is sitting in an area where there's kind of like a, a like a iron pot. Uh, there's another, there's like a candlestick sitting at the lower left corner. There's uh, uh, two of them kind of in this area on the far right. Okay. Kind of where you picked up the dragon from. Got you. All right, um, because I'm really bad at losing friends, um, like really, really bad at losing friends. I will um, come out of this room and go to the right where I think Loser and them went. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You you move out and you you do see where they were kind of headed and and and. Uh, were okay. any of, sorry. Were any of the mm. pawns in that room? The room that they're headed towards. Yes. Yes, there were two of them there. Okay. Um, so, uh, Eke, you can see pretty clearly, since there are no doors here, you're seeing through this, this conservatory with the flowers and things um, and the plants. You're seeing into that room. So you might notice watching your friends hide. They were hiding under that table. You see them kind of get up and move into some room that you can't see, but you know that they're headed back in the direction of the kitchen just deeper in the house. I'm going to, is the, is the plant noticing me or because I'm invisible, the plant's not doing anything? The plant is not noticing you anymore. Okay, I will. Oof. I know, you're like, do I drop the invisibility to get the plant? Do I spend the spell points is really what it comes down to. Um, da -dum 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 -dum. Super interesting to me that you went invisible. Yeah. I'm gonna, uh, although visibility lasts, uh, I don't think it lasts that long. I think a minute. I think I'm probably done by now. Yeah, you're like sitting there thinking, you're like, do I do this? Do I do this? Do I do this? And, and you see your reflection in the mirror oh. or in the window. Hello. And what did the plant do? Uh, when you pop up, the plant kind of jolts into a posture. Okay. I want to back up with the plant with my finger, trying to control the plant. And as the plant- As you start to back up, the plant moves farther away from the window. So I want to make the plant go toward Felicia or Moonstone, whoever I can see or, or loser and mimic tap them on the shoulder. <laughs> uh, so the problem is they're no longer in that room. They, if oh, no. anything, they're deep towards the room in the next one. So if you continue to back up, this plant will fall off of the shelf and draw something into this room. Definitely will not do that then. Uh, Oh boy. Okay. Um, this window's locked. It is locked. Locked the same way as before. But I didn't see how they opened it last time. Uh, you were standing. Yeah, I think because they rolled an eight on their stealth check, you saw pretty. Yeah, much we it. watched them do all of it. Yeah. I will try and. Oh yeah, that's right. I will try and mimic that to try. It pretty and easily it. works the same way. It, okay. The lock dangles and the window opens. The plant almost instinctively holds out its uh, for a high five. I will. <laughs> I, paw, I will paw five it. You paw five it. It paw forms five. two of them form a heart. I have two dissipate. tails, so I will just form two tailed heart, two tails with a heart. <laughs> two tails. As I'm leaving. Um, and I will, I realize I'm in this room now and my friends are gone. Yeah, you saw which way they went though. 
Okay. Um, I th I think I'm gonna read down. I'm I'm almost out of spells here. Uh, I will cast one more invisibility on myself. Okay. And I have only one. What spell left? Okay, visible again. So you're invisible. Will, yep. I'm a, I'm a, the type of fox I am is called the Night Stalker, so I'm I'm pretty good at stealth. So with the invisibility, I will stealth my way silently. Yeah, make a stealth check with advantage because you're invisible. Yep. Uh, 17 and a 15. So we'll keep that 17. Okay. We'll go with the uh, so 23 plus invisibility. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're a ghost. Uh, yeah, you walk pretty freely throughout here, and you see your friends stealthily leaning into this this dining room, um, where this this uh, this dragon is splayed out on this table. The dragon is a lot; it's just tied down, um, and uh, kind of uh, it's almost like this dragon is asleep, um, but it's clearly having a nightmare. Uh, and you see that one kind of tall hag uh, standing over it. Uh, and uh, one of the hags kind of reaches down and says, there, there, little fairy winkle. We will have your dream soon. I will stay back from the party, out of the way, to watch their back as they, I am assuming, inevitably make a move. Okay. And so, I wait uh, patiently. So you all have a beat to, to whisper to one another to, to hear what you want to do. There are two hags in this room. There's another in the kitchen that's adjacent to this room. Um, you have some options. Uh, you you can uh, I um, to to recap what you have you've put forth. You can fight, you can negotiate, or you can try to distract and uh, free the dragon in a different way. It's all up to you. So uh, mm. it's exciting, guys. You want make to a plan, as as Ek said. We're running out of time. Make a plan. Yeah, I think I think Moonstone is definitely going to push for distraction and then going in and saving the dragon so my game plan involves putting a silent spell on an arrow and shooting that hag Ooh, that's a great idea that's um, a good distraction for one of them i will cast the spell catapult and i will start loading things into the catapult to be catapulted at the hags <laughs> okay okay so we went to fight. Um. Oh, were was that up for debate? So two for <laughs> offensive. Okay. Was were we? Just remember when that catapult spell goes off. Any or when that silence spell goes off, any spell that relies on speaking cannot be cast in that range. Gotcha. So catapult is a somatic spell, so it only requires your hands to use. But, oh, perfect. <laughs> but if you try to do a spell that requires speaking, it will not work if you're in this bubble. I think it's a twenty foot radius, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, Moonstone is it, while she, while everyone else, it seems like is going to go on the offensive. I think Moonstone's like looking for exits, like <laughs> are the exits that uh, that are in this room that she could uh, go around. Um, All right, and in the spirit of the Feywild, there is always another option. So, what do you all do? Uh, I will wait and react to my my companions. I am prepared to do a run. I so we, are we going to just try and take those those two hags out and free the dragon, or? Well, I think it would be best to get a lick in, right? I I really do, and then I can send my tiny robot to go untie the dragon. I feel I feel like that could be fun for everyone. And then you know what? We got backup, baby. We got backup in my duck cannon, and it goes boom right there. We're gonna do this absolutely perfectly. One round tops. So we want to we want to alpha strike those two hags, but the third one won't hear anything, presumably, because the third one's trying to cook something. I mean. Or someone can go kill the third hag too, and we TPK these hags. Leave the third <laughs> hag to me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Actually, here, here's what we'll do. We'll split the party properly. You two, Perfect. Loser and Felicia, take out the two hags in the main room. Moonstone, you want to go grind out the last one? Uh, well, 
I, I, I'm still just wanting to leave. You know. <laughs> yeah, Lou's still like, I still think that there's there's a way out of this uh, without going this route. I'm all in. One of these hags the... looks much more powerful than the others. Yeah, she's she's like, hags are. The candlestick holding hag looks <laughs> like she can throw down. Okay. Perhaps, May I... perhaps we can start but... a fire in another room. Yes, that. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. We can lose her with a good. I point. mean, I'm pretty sure we <laughs> should just do the murder death, but that's that's fine. Alicia um, wants the double double murder on these two hags. I <laughs> want the double murder, but if if that's what the team wants, oh, they have a oh. Hold on here. Based on the history of knowing the hags, though, we know I, the hags. Um, I would like to volunteer my services to go start this fire. I'm not surprised for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where would you I, like to try to start the fire? Um, well. <laughs> there's a particular room there's that's a, really good for her character. Room. Would it perhaps be above the game room that you were in? I I very much so think it is. Okay, deal. <laughs> so you're gonna sneak off uh, while you you feel like do you feel like you all have a plan? Uh, we wait for the fire. They leave, free the dragon, run for our lives. Yep. Okay, I'll go with that one. Okay. Yes. Um. Now, uh, once I get to this room, um. It's just a lot of stuff going on in here. Um, and I feel like I have to hide this from the group for right now because of what I'm about to do. Um, I would like to take my wand of secrets. And I would like to see if there's a secret door anywhere hiding very valuable books, if you will. And I'll like spend one charge on that. It lets me know if there's a door or secret door or trap within 30 feet of me um that's an interesting question is there a secret door you and i are looking at the same map do you know yes. there's a secret door there oh is there i don't know <laughs> oh i i don't know i was just i think i think it's reasonable to suspect there there is perhaps a secret door. So you would you would see that there is a glow of a book on one of these shelves. It looks like it is begging to be tilted in a classical tilt the book fashion. On yes, the I I will tilt the book. Do you do that before or after you set the room on fire? Um, <laughs> I will tilt that book before I light it on fire. Okay, you tilt the book. The bookshelf turns. And you find yourself in a study. I tilt the book again. The, the bookshelf again turns, and you find yourself back in the library. Ooh, I put the cannon on the little pedestal at me, and I grab a couple of books just to be sure, you know. Just you take to be a sure really not... good looking uh, mystery novel off there. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then we light it. I, I say a prayer for all the, all the books in the library and we light it up and then I hit the turn style. Are you, yeah, you, your duck lights, all of this dry paper begins to crackle and burn. Uh, the, the entire room is engulfed in flames rather quickly. You pull the book, the bookshelf twists. Uh, there's still some bits of the carpet that are lit when you get into the new room. Maybe your duck stamps them out. Uh, and the rest of you all, uh, you see this kind of orange light uh, go across the dancing room that you moved through. You see both of the hags kind of turn their heads towards it, and they're going to talk for a moment. They're going to see if one or both of them are going. Ooh. Okay, so they they talk for a moment. You see the larger hag smack the wet haired hag for a second that one slaps that one back and they both go towards the room uh leaving the dragon uh exposed on the dining room though 
in not a weird way. I don't like the way I was said exposed in the dining room like that. Um, the dragon is just laying on this table. Uh, and as they kind of move out, you see the dragon kind of like sleepily open its eyes. Uh, and, and then the eyes kind of get wider and it tries to pick its head up, but it's tied down uh, behind. Um, and it kind of like, in this, this pained kind of sentiment says, you came. Uh, and it looks like it's like really, really tired. Um, Moonstone's gonna hop in and, and immediately like just uh, cut the whatever. It's you, hop, you hop in, you begin cutting these like dark roots, similar I'll to the ones you saw. I'll on this if it helps. Yeah, uh, loser, sorry again, jumps to the other side. You begin cutting the ties. What about Eke? I would like, uh, so they're untying the dragon. Is this, does this dragon look like it's been hurt? Um, it does, it does look like it's been hurt a little bit. You, you know, uh, loser might realize now that those bits of periwinkle stuff were this dragon whose name is Fairy Winkles, uh, blood kind of a trail moving through the forest. It looks like these binds are pretty deep. It looks like they maybe cast some magic on it. It looks burned in some areas. I would like to, with my last spell, uh, whisper a healing word at it. And when you say that, you you go ahead and start to restore the 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 that health. You see the dragon's head picking up a little bit. How much health does it get back? Heal. And I'm out of spells. Yay! Nice. Uh, the, the how much? How many points was it? Six. Six. Yeah. So, it, you see it kind of pick its head up. It. As you finish those binds, it kind of pushes itself off the dining room table and stretches its wings out a little bit. Uh, this is this is a large dragon. So this dragon, like as far as size, this is a big dining room table. It's like this dragon is like the size of a car, by the way. I should probably explain that earlier. Um, but it's a pretty big dragon. So when it when it kind of leans off of this and stretches its wings, it like fills up the room for a second. Uh, and it kind of leans down to you all uh, and says, uh, "We need to get out of here quickly, or the or the the Bark Blood Sisters will be back." Is there an opening big enough for him to like, get out these small windows? Like how? Seems like the front doors might be. There's a set of double doors there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question: The layout, which I can't see. Is there a path to get? Like I can see from this point. Is there a path? It's like a get? T. It's like you're in this side. Here was the room you came from, and then the bottom of the T is the way out. Okay. And the perceptively, the hags are on, on the other the, side. On the on each side of the T, so they would have to come down the the, the funnel to. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't really care about money, so I think what I'll do is, why don't you guys get this dragon out the front door, and I'll hold the hags off. I'll meet right. you out there shortly. Interesting. I got one last chronomantic power I want to use. This will be fun. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess we're going to sneak with the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd say you'd have, you can use your old stealth rolls, um, in a hold through, you get the sense they're pretty distracted with this fire that you could probably move through pretty oh. easily. Could, so, sorry, you guys do that and then I'll do my thing. The one exception is maybe the hag in the kitchen that you're going to have to pass on the way out. Now's a good time for that silent spell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good time for that silence spell. All right, I'm going to cast it on the dragon. I'm going to cast nice. silence on the dragon. The dragon says, there's one really important thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just going to be like, oh, shit. Everything within 20 feet is enveloped in silence now. So all of your footfalls, every creak, you can see the bowing of the wood as this dragon moves through the household, but you don't hear anything from it. The dragon like instinctively reacts when its wing knocks over like a priceless Feywild vase uh, that crashes to the floor, but there's just, it's nothing. Nice. All you see is the light of the fire, the shadows dancing on the wall as you move through. 
uh, and you peer your head around and you look into that kitchen and you see one of the hags stirring furiously at some sort of batter. Uh, a hand uh, forms from the batter and tries to grab the ladle. You see her being pulled into the pot before she pulls herself out and sprinkles some sort of dust that seems to calm it. Uh, and you move towards the uh, the devil doors with this dragon and unlock them with ease. Yeah. Do I see them oh, leaving? I, I open it for the dragon. I just like kind of usher it through. Yeah. You you step out first, or you let the dragon go first? I let the dragon go first. I you let the dragon go first, and its its wings bend, and it kind of gets stuck for a second, trying to wiggle out. It seems like it's trying to pull itself through. Why don't you make a strength check? <laughs> if you want to roll with advantage, you all, one of you can help the other. Yeah, I'll, I'll help. Uh, seventeen. Yeah, you push on the dragon and it pops out the other side and the dragon stretches its wings, says something, you see its mouth moving, but you, you can't understand what it's saying. Um, I would like to, since I'm all the way up. You are all the way up. You see the hags running. You can hear, you can hear them saying, my library, my books, my precious so mystery novels. What? <laughs> I'm gonna go double murder on someone. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, they're not there anymore. Uh, so once, once they go into the library, can I sneak past? Mic on. And Mic off. Like down toward the ballroom. Is there a way I can cast grease in front of the door as I go by? <laughs> yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. And then. Uh, but I see you casting grease. Actually, I was going to say, uh, Eke will say, wait, the whisper, put it in the T intersection to stop the kitchen. No, I, I got it. I got it. Uh -oh. Um, then, because you guys are on the other side of the earth. <laughs> well, I haven't left yet. I'm still in the hallway. Which, uh, what oh, I, so you're at the base here. Okay. Because what I understand yeah. is the hallway leads to the door out, and then there's a T intersection, and the hags are in the T. Uh, is there a choke point? Sort of, sort of. Not, is not this, really. This yeah, it's it's really hard just without showing you. Sort of, but not really. So I'm gonna roll past the library, the like where the kitchen would be is on the other side from where i'm at yeah yeah so i could grease and then sneak through here unless we're just double tapping people huh. which they don't know what fix, here is. Fix it. They can't i'm sorry them. unless the entrance which is where you guys are are you uh is your plan to grease so that they slip with i think it'll help if i share the rest of the map how about that, that yes i feel like yeah. it, i feel like I feel we like can i feel like the secret we can share now to everyone yeah. Uh, Except chat. So I can share it in chat. I think I can share links. Oh my log. god. <laughs> Here you go, chat. <laughs> oh, oh my yes, goodness. I just made this up in my head and it worked. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um so that's the map we're working the, with. The south you got, center. You right? guys came from this side and went Yeah. There. I'm over here. True so south. I'm by the billiards room. <laughs> Yeah, I let that one slip by accident. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's really, oh, wow. Okay. Crazy. So you would be where, like, <laughs> the kitchen, between the kitchen and the ballroom, and I'd be where the billiards and the ballroom is. There's 100% a dead body in one of these rooms that's gone yes. unexplained yep. and a butler trying to solve it. <sighs> oh, no. Hold on. Just Tim Curry Let right me around help. in the background. It's Russia Jenkins the in the virtual. dining room with the candles. He's like, hey, we're 99% sure. So where's the I can't believe out? I got that one on the head. All right. Um, well, I feel like we should just make our way out unless you're going to do something to nope. in the kitchen. I was just going to do something to slow them down. So if you want to cast Grease. Well, I'm going to cast Grease once they go in the library. 
Uh, there's no way I can barricade the door, which would be nice, but... I can. Well, I'm already past it. We're already at the front. All right, well, we haven't left. Only the dragon left. We're still chilling. We we can go. So you you already moved past the library. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's pretty silent over there. Uh, there. The hag in the kitchen looks pretty occupied. Well, I think we did our job. We can go and maybe let the... Uh... Let the authorities know about the hags here, and they can come after them if we want. The oh, authorities, yeah. yes. The Feywild authorities. Yeah, yeah back, back up on Route 66. Route not O-U, but O-O route. We got it. Um, is there a way that on the way out, uh, I go out the conservatory, but I light the plants on fire, too, to just no. more no. I don't no. think that the party will approve of that move. No. They have bonded too much with these go plants. Steal a plant. Wait, yeah, we bring the, the plant that. with us? We should bring the plant with us. Agreed. Thank Why you. Why are we getting... Okay. Look, this is kindling everyone. <laughs> Man, this plant is our mascot. This plant helped us multiple times. I can't well, believe grab right the broken... I guess you could say this plant helped us supplant the plot. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, like this whole uh, session I, has been soiled. I'm sorry. I, was a a brick there, you know? I will light the conservatory on fire as I crawl out the window, and I'll take one plant for the team. Yeah. Felicia fixes everything, and I'll lock the door if. Lock the window. Why would you? I got your plan. There was more than one. Not my <laughs> problem. All right. So you all, you move past. We're not torching the plants or we are torching the plants? I am taking one and torching the rest. Taking one. You take the one that bonded with the party uh, and put it on your duck and then and then plant violence happens. <laughs> uh, plant violence happens. I would but, like to lock the window again. If so possible. I can't get out? What do you No, plant because murderer? I want to light these hags on fire. <laughs> We're not having another Hansel and Gretel here, baby. We're letting it rip. We didn't. You light it. some of the plants ablaze. You step outside of the window. You close the window. And then to lock it, you need the aid of the plant. And as you do, you use it to lock, and then the plant gives you a heart oh, no. as the moon clouds up with smoke, <laughs> oh uh, and you all make your way out of the Feywild. <laughs> uh, back to the portal with, with Fairy Winkle, um, you all emerge on the other side of uh, Moon Glimmer Lake. Uh, Fairy Winkle thanks you uh, for saving them. Uh, and tells you that he's quite fond of the playwright who sleeps on his banks occasionally. Uh, and we'll fix his Fey crossing to link to somewhere else in the Feywild to evade these hag sisters if they survived uh, the burning of their plant room and library. Um, we, uh, you all return back to uh, Reginald Wells uh, after talking to the dragon, I'm assuming. Yes. We're, oh, yeah, we'll hang with dragon for a bit. we're we're expediting the, yeah. the mm -hmm. we finished the hags. We'll wrap this up. Um Reginald tells you that after he visits the lake again and can confirm that the dreams do come, he will pay you the rest of your sum. And he takes a trip up to Moon Glimmer Lake the next day and returns that night uh, with the other half of your uh hundred gold pieces each. Um in addition, uh, uh, Fairy Winkle uh, tells you all that he will return, uh, he will award you all with a gift of your choice from his hoard, um, which if we were to continue beyond this session, uh, we would carry on with that. Uh, but that's that's our adventure for tonight. Yay. Um, Yay. I hope you all had fun. Uh, yes, <laughs> we had the double murder, it was just plants. <laughs> Uh, you raise the other plant, maybe cultivated or something like that. Um, but uh, why don't we why don't we wrap up? We'll go around. We'll have you remind our viewers who you are uh, and uh, plug something, and uh, that'll that'll be the end of this. We're going to start in reverse order for funsies, uh, and we will start with cat. 
Hi everyone, I'm Kat Kruger. I'm usually the Dungeon Master at D20 Dames. Um, I'm a freelance game designer at my own studio, uh, Steampunk Unicorn Studio, and I work on games like HeroQuest. I'm currently working on Larian's um, Divinity uh, Original Sin board game, things like that. Um, yeah, you can find me at steampunkunicornstudio.com. Love it. Um, I believe next was Athena. That's me. I kick people in the face for a living. And when I'm not doing that, I play video games on our Twitch channel where me and my lovely husband over here heckle each other and have a great time. <laughs> uh, you can find us at Half Dragon AP. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Athena Palmer underscore FG. And yeah, Resident Nerd. That's about it. Awesome. <laughs> Matthew? And you can also find me at Half Dragon AP. You can also find me at PW Monster Hunter. It stands for Pro Wrestling Monster Hunter. That's right. I'm a professional wrestler, and I wrestle all the seven foot demonic characters. Even though I'm five foot eight, it's a lot of fun, and it doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> awesome, uh, Thomas. Uh, yeah, I'm Tommy. I've got uh, so what you saw today was coming from this book here, which is uh, you can get it on Backer Kit right now on the pre order. I also am a freelance game designer, the previous designer of the Divinity board game. Um, and so I, 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 uh, I look forward to seeing what Moonstone or uh, does, sorry, Kat <laughs> does for us in the future and, uh, and for the game. I think it should be great. Uh, your, your skills as a designer are wonderful. It's been a lot of fun playing with you guys. Uh, I'm also, uh, if you want to see this character played more often, we have our finale on Six Sides of Gaming this Sunday at 12 noon Eastern oh, Standard cool. Time. Uh, and I'll be playing this character's finale scene, uh, but he'll be much more powerful level, level 12. And okay. you get a chance to see some more, more chronomancy. But uh, thank you all so much for having me. I'm also from Canada. And ironically, about 10 minutes away from where all your amazing Beetle and Grimm products are printed. So mm -hmm. I get to see it all being printed. And I'm not even part of the company. <laughs> be careful with those goblins. Uh, they're dangerous around the presses. Yeah, the chronomancy stuff was really cool. Thanks for, for doing that. Well, thanks for playing along with uh, me. Um, uh, I am Justice Ramin Arman. I was your dungeon master tonight. I am a freelance game designer and a producer game designer here at uh, Beetle and Grimm's, um, where I get to work on cool stuff like this with my pal Jason uh, Vickery, who was our resident producer tonight. Jason, can you say hello again and plug Ooh. anything you'd like to plug? Hello again. <laughs> uh, follow us on the socials. Follow us on uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff. And uh, we appreciate y'all coming out. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, it, this this encounter will be pretty probably pretty close to what happened here, minus some plant violence and the clue board game map. Uh, but you can check it out in our Fizzman Silver Edition coming up, uh, and we have all kinds of products on our website. Uh, so give them a, give them a check out. Follow us at Beal and Grimms on pretty much every social media, whatever. Uh, but that's it for tonight. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you did, and uh, have a Good night. I think that's the end, right? Thank you, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, Good night everybody. Good night. You committed plant murder. <laughs> plant murder. <laughs>